Oh, that's that's fine. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Is that all right? Is that all right? Yeah, that's, that that completely. No, that's fine. That that enhances it. Like people, like if you have kids, people uh, crying in the background, or if there's a dog barking. I don't know why people why that would bother people. That would just add more personality. Like, oh, I have a I have a dog. That's cool to know. Or I have yeah, a baby. He's also vegan. He's also vegan. So no, seriously. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Dogs are totally fine. Like, it's a really common misconception because dogs are omnivores. Uh, and I, I consulted a vet before I turned him vegan, uh, like veterinary surgeon. And um, one of the things is, as long as they have enough protein, they produce their own taurine, unlike cats. So oh. dogs can be happy and healthy on a vegan diet, no problem. I Actually, one of, the oldest, a... one of the oldest living I... dogs in the world was uh, vegan. Well, I'm going I'm, to... I'm not going to agree or disagree because i haven't looked at yeah it's empirical it, it, you need the research yeah. yeah yeah so i don't know um but yeah so you see that it's recording right um <clears throat> top left yes it is yeah i don't do i okay good all right fantastic <clears throat> all right so how do we get i don't know if you um if i i just had another this debate with a vegan uh that one went very bad <laughs> oh really oh no yeah but i'm not it. like every time like i'm i don't do that thing that people like have that have bad experiences with vegans i mean i made a post about it <laughs> and i shouldn't have generalized like i didn't mean to generalize but my post was a generalization about i said this is what vegans do when they can't make their, their point or their camera but i should have said sometimes like i shouldn't have made a generalization about vegan people yeah it's yeah. just people like uh when people can't get that point across you know and uh, i think especially at times when there's such con like controversy you know and um you know uh, tempers run high i think it's very yeah, easy what pisses was, was really we agree his name was what's his name i forgot his name i was looking for it ask yourself oh, you, <laughs> you know him <laughs> so he, we agreed to rec he was recording and he was going to send me a copy but he was so pissed off that he didn't <laughs> send me a copy and he didn't publish it so i'm like I'm wow gonna, okay. i'm not gonna comment look like the thing is me and ask yourself i've had interactions in the past uh right. i'm trying to distance myself from like any of the controversy with him anymore because oh, okay. i think we're on fairly decent terms for once uh, and i'm just gonna leave it at right. that but uh, i'm so, not i've had, I've had uh, yeah <laughs> I wasn't, and i and i could tell you but if he releases the video you could see that i was not trying at all to piss him off but he was so angry at the end. I didn't know. And I was trying to I was trying to do all my best to calm him down, but it didn't work. I don't know. Anyways, but I'm hoping today I could do better and not make you I'm hoping that I don't piss you off at least. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, man. Um I mean if I'm if I'm wrong, just tell me where I'm wrong. And if I don't if you don't convince me, I'm hoping that it's not because I'm <clears throat> more you know i'm I'm hoping that you could you know i mean i'm i'm trying to be right okay i'm trying to be right I, i'm not yeah. being wrong on purpose okay <laughs> like, I'm, I mean, objective. Yeah. yeah i'm trying my best to be figure out where i'm wrong and if i fail at that i'm sorry i'm honestly doing my best i'm i'm being honest we're well, all human and that's just the way that works right. um you know we can't make mistakes and I know that I'll definitely be making a few, so uh, yeah. yeah, don't I'll worry about it, man. Essentially, um, the reason, like, I think one of me, one of like, I think a mutual viewer arranged this. Um, essentially, uh, I had actually expressed a while ago that I would love to debate you because I saw that um, you debate Cosmic Skeptic. Yes, uh, and I think you're both that's wrong. That's uh, <laughs> good. Um, and you know, I, I think Cosmic Skeptic, like Alex, really nice guy. Um, oh, he... And I think he did a really good job at. Um, you know, trying to convey the vegan message in that, um, especially in the normative aspects of like, you know, what, what we do and don't do and why. Um, but when he says that um, it's okay to kill an animal painlessly, you're both kind of agreed on that. Uh, at least that's what I yeah. got. Like, it, as long as the, the death was instantaneous, painless, and that there was like, you know, and it was isolated, fair enough. Uh, right. And, and that I have a problem with that. Right. Um, and... Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, anyway, um, 
Uh, anyway, so me, uh, so my main qualm is essentially that Alex's position is that, and your position was that it's okay to kill an animal so long it's painless, and that so that there wasn't another being aware of the suffering in relation to it, and um, which means that, like for example, if you were to raise a pig in isolation, and let's say um, it lived a moderately good life in isolation, which might might not may not may or may not be possible for a pig because of that social isolation. Being. Well, it, the isolation is not necessary for me, but go on. But, um, or even like, let's say we raised a pig that was, um, you know, let's say we raised it and then we took it away uh, and then killed it away from the other pigs. So right. that I mean, it, if, you, if, you... if it's proven, if it's proven that the other pigs, well, I mean, as long as the other pigs do not get to see this, the act of killing, <clears throat> yeah. that's fine. I mean, and oh. also it, it sh I think it should be legal for to separate uh, baby pigs from their mothers because they suffer from that psychologically. So, mm -hmm. but I don't, but I don't think the other pigs are gonna miss, are gonna know what's happening to Kevin. They're not gonna right, go Kevin around and be like, "Where's Kevin? What's happening? Who?" Yeah, like, we're, and like they're not gonna be like, "We're concerned. What happened to Kevin? He was here this morning and he's not here now." Like they're not yeah. gonna be trauma. Like the tra they're not gonna experience any trauma from that. I think so. Yeah, and the, the, yeah. because they don't have the ability to conceptualize in a form of self-awareness um, and, right. and uh, a, a basically a deeper form of conceptualization, which allows them to divest objects from the world temporally and, and right. carry them on wow. through a narrative. Yeah, yeah, and and a lot of a lot of vegans <clears throat> at this point saying like, oh, pigs are very smart. Yeah, but smart and self-awareness is not the same thing, right? Like, yeah. pigs are smarter than crows, but crows are self-aware and pigs are not. So intelligence and self-awareness are different things. Well, I mean, um, I think it depends what we mean by self-awareness anyway. I'm not sure if any linguistic being can be absolute, like, self-aware in the same respect, and like a non uh, in the same respect as a human. Um, yeah. Primarily it's, because it's, of the lack of... A, um, it's not a binary thing. Yeah, sorry, I interrupted you. Um, primarily because I think that conceptualization um, is held constant in language. I think that's like the Wittgensteinian position that you, oh. need, a, you need language for... Um, uh, a solid identity. The I is a linguistic term. And so like uh, 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 the ability to be truly self-aware, which is like to mm. carry yourself as an I throughout time. Like I was in the past. I was, I am going to be in the future. I am experiencing right now. Um, all exist okay. in a form of psychological continuity, which I would say exists in language. Uh, and I don't think animals That is very interesting. That is yeah. very interesting. Um, although I don't think that's a good uh, reason to harm animals. And and I'm going to, I'm going to explain harm. why. Harm, I don't think... <laughs> Yeah, so that we have to define harm because I think if you take away something from an animal that it never appreciated having, it should be it could be defined as harm. I would say that harm would be to um, cause unnecessary suffering to a being, like to, to, okay. to so. Yep, suffering. Yeah, so killing humanely is not suffering. Well, I, I would say it will be, but we'll get on to that in a minute, right? Okay. So, okay. so, okay. so, so like. Um, like when we say when we talk about like what suffering is and, and we talk about like um the negative aspects of, of against an individual um we could say that suffering was purely pain responses or we can say that it is a, a negative uh a, a negative experience for the individual or, or even um a negative consequence towards the individual's interests so let's say like uh, um right. you can suffer without actually having feel like in this respect, I guess I want to make a division, I suppose, between suffering and harm. I suppose right. I would probably want to say that um, suffering would be the experience of negative phenomenological experiences, uh, pain, um, you know, um, psychological distress, whatever it may be. Uh, and then I would probably say that uh, something that is harmful ultimately undermines um, what would inherently do benefit the individual's experience so someone could be harmed let's say someone was to spread a rumor about someone you are harming them even if they do not find out about that rumor because you might be harming their experience you might be preventing them from let's say getting a promotion at work or, or yep. something like that you Correct. are harming yeah. Them. right yeah um, yeah. um yeah. and i hope that, that utility that can... in general like yeah. i think that we could... yeah you're creating you're creating a circumstance which is not respecting the individual's interests right right so um, this is what I think we do. I think, and I think Peter Singer says this point, like, um, a, a mouse has an interest in not being kicked along a road whilst a rock does not. Um, right. and essentially I think that you and Cosmic Skeptic 
make the point that it has an interest in not being kicked along the road because it would feel suffering and that suffering instantly gives it a negative phenomenological experience from which it wants to flee from and reject. Fair, fair enough. Um, so. I would agree, but then you would say that, but if we then isolated that mouse and killed it humanely, it would not suffer. I would right. say that is true. It would not suffer, but it would still be harmed. Now, no. The harm is essentially like when when we think about how we um, conceptualize and make um, judgments about individuals. Um, for example, even our own lives. I think you made the point that we care about our own futures. For example, because we can conceptualize ourselves in the future. Do you agree? Right. Yes. Yeah. And and because of that, we have an inst we have a, some sort of um, we have a weight in the future. We have a um, you know we we that the, the reason that we care about the future is because of this con self conceptualization. Right. Okay. This is yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah. That's not true. Um, we care about the future. Be we are aware that we care about the future because of the conceptualization, but we care about the future because we will exist in the future. Because what we are right now is possibility. Like we exist as the, the possible wait, future self. Wait, sorry, I missed it. How's what's the difference? Rick, can you I missed So you. rather than the we don't simply gain interest in the future because we're aware of the future. We gain interest in the future we already have an interest in the future and we become aware of it. That's the difference. Self-awareness isn't to say that we have created uh, our, our, uh, um, uh, an aspect in the future from which they, which then gains value, which is like yeah, but, Lewis wait, will exist. So, so I still don't see the difference for you to, you have, for you to, you have interest in the future now, but for you to be able to, you know, Imagine that you have to imagine yourself in the future. Yes, you'd have to to imagine it, but then your interest, your actual experience of the future, is today. Yeah, is is a is a present experience, but yes, that is yes, that yes. is that is uh, phenomenologically in it inherent. Would you agree? It's just part of subjectivity. Yeah, but what's I don't. But see then too... your consideration of that future subjectivity is your self conceptualization. Okay. But Sorry, the value, that. the value of that conceptualization does not exist in the concept, in the mental state of who or what I will be doing, like who, who I will be or what I'll be doing in the future. It exists in my experience of the future. Okay. So it's not the concept, it's the experience that I am still grounding my value on. Yeah, the experience today. Yeah, but it's, but yeah. it's today, tomorrow and, and every day throughout. That experience is is a real. Like, my concept is a realization that I will one day be experiencing something, and that's what I'm valuing. Okay, the, I mean, yeah, but to be again to be able to do that, you need to create an image of you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You I have agree. to create to that be image. Able to do that. Yeah. Okay. okay. But the value, even if I'm not aware of it, would still exist. For example, today. I feel, let's say, I feel no suffering. And tomorrow... But, by the way, can we explain to people why this is important? Because what we're trying, yeah. to, what we're trying to establish is that uh, the reason, like, for example, if I kill you today without suffering, that would be a crime against all the... I I'm, I'm, I'm think this is where you're going with, like, you, you, all the potential pleasures and happiness and utility that you could have experienced tomorrow, all your dreams, all your plans and everything so even if i kill you uh, if, if i kill you um without suffering i still commit i took something from you that you were looking forward to you're you know you're you know it's i still took something away that you were appreciative of but we're saying it that that's <clears throat> not we're doing that's not true with even the sm uh, some some of the smartest animals because they don't have for them to for them to lose something, they first have to have a self-awareness for them, advanced level of self-awareness for them to, they don't even have themselves in the yeah, future. Yeah. 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 So that's why this is the difference between <clears throat> humans and other animals. So we, we didn't take, technically we didn't take anything from them, but we did take away from them potential of pleasure, even if they were not aware of it. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah. Yeah. Like, right. so, so like, yeah, I agree with that. So for example, if you, I agree with that, like if you kill a bunny, without any pain what you didn't do is that you didn't they did the, the bunny doesn't have any understanding that it itself exists i mean it understands that any bunnies exist they understand that its foods exist 
they're like you see like oh my god that's a very sexy bunny i want to go make you know fuck that bunny so they understand that but they don't understand that me i i, I exist right so that the, uh, however if you if i kill that but so if i kill that bunny you could have enjoyed some f- some food tomorrow or having sex with another bunny tomorrow and i took that potential away from them by killing them yeah so that's what you're getting at yeah and that, that, okay. that, that conceptualization their ability to realize that possibility is irrelevant to what we're considering right. i think a good example is is like let's take a, a human individual who conceptualizes their themselves in the future as an inherent negative they think their life past to, to, to today will be suffering beyond measure and so they've come to the conclusion that it would be better to die than to experience tomorrow do we respect their conceptualization of themselves in the future and kill them or do we instead respect what is more likely to happen that they'll wake up tomorrow and realize that they actually won't suffer the same way that they thought they would that it was perhaps a um do we know what's more likely well they'll, they'll say that like um like given the circumstances of the individual there is no uh, rational justification to believe that they will suffer inherently tomorrow and, right. uh, and that tomorrow I mean will there be are wider well. consequences yeah. as well like do we I mean the opposite of that would be like if somebody thinks that they're going to have a great life but we know that they're going to have nothing but suffering can we kill them just to make sure that they you know because that mercy kill would be in their interest even if they don't know it right so from a utilitarian perspective maybe it would be the best thing the most moral thing to do is to kill them right here and now uh, even though they think their life is going to be great, but we have knowledge that it's going to be nothing but suffering. But the wider thing that you have to take into account is that if we do allow that for us to kill somebody just because we know that they're going to be suffering, now we live in a world where we have allowed European mercy, ki- mercy killing people without their consent, and there could be consequences to that that is going to be damaging to society in ways that we can't yeah, even imagine. But that, that's right? fair enough. But then what we're doing is what we're balancing normative ethics on. We're, and we're saying that like what normative ethics is, is actually an institutional format. And that when we come to conclusions as to whether to act in one way or the other, we'll have to do it on a communicable level, uh, right. which then respects the greater broader overall society and not just single individuals. And what right. we'll have is like the kind of hermeneutic circle in which the universal is combined with the particular and then reevaluated. That's fair enough. But then we can create institutions as well which then reflect certain values so for example um if an individual is um you know made unconscious uh, and is un- unable to consent um uh, what would happen then and then we'll have institutions that step in and we'll have uh, different reasonings that are built into these institutions which reflect those overall values but that's right. fair enough but that happens that happens through time and we can we can resolve so- these problems that's um yeah. So, but coming uh, coming back to the example that you give with the bunny that you mentioned, you know, I think it would be wrong to kill a bunny that has a lot of fucking and eating to look forward to, even mm-hmm. if it's humane, right? But that's not what's happening with the meat industry, is it? Though, like, or not just forget. Let's let's not actually make it more complicated. But what if I the bunny? What if I? What if the only reason why that bunny exists is because I bred that, you know, bunny because I want to eat it, right? Mm -hmm. So in that situation, all the eating and the fucking that the bunny is enjoying is because I want to eat it, right? So So if 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 we remove the eating part from the equation, the, the... the fucking and the eating that the bunny enjoyed wouldn't even exist to begin with, right? So... Maybe in that situation, the eating of the bunny is a good thing because it gave the bunny the excuse to experience some happiness rather than no happiness. So what we'll have to do is then balance out what is <clears throat> whether the positives and negatives of the bunny's life or whatever animal's life would be worth an experience of uh, animal agriculture, which, uh, mm-hmm. as we say, is inherently brutal. And I think that you right. were going to make but the like, point in as this well. Example, before we go to the f- animal, I, you okay. agree in this, so in this example, example. Let's say the bunny lives a great life, but it's going to get killed. But it only lived that life because I bred it into existence. 
Yeah, and, and yeah. yeah, for the purpose okay. of eating. What I would say is that because my use of the bunny, once it is here, like I bred it into existence, okay, with the intent, uh, with the sole intention of using it as a means to an end, mm -hmm. okay, then I would say that. But you once... also enjoy the fact that it enjoyed its life while it lived. Yeah, but when, also when like it's that. here, when it's here, if I'm to respect that bunny as having equal interests to my own or having equal interests to any other sentient being, then what I would say is that my killing of the bunny once it is here is then unjustified. That what I've if it's, acted in the first what place. If, what if you that sell my it? My first decision to to breed it was one of hubris and caprice. And I haven't rationally okay. considered that I'm going to have to treat this bunny as being a morally considerable being. Okay, so let's fair enough. Let's change the scenario then a little bit. Uh, what if you're not going to eat the bunny? But you're going to sell the bunny to people who are, you're going to kill the bunny and you're going to sell its meat to people that are going to eat it. And mm. with that money, <clears throat> you can now breed more bunnies. You could bring more bunnies into life that are going to enjoy their life. So, mm. by, you know, uh, and enjoy fucking and eating while they live and then kill them and give them to other people. Well, I would say that the, the, there's an inherent flaw that primarily because what we respect is not simply experience, is not simply uh, pleasure and pain. It is the expression of a being experiencing pleasure and pain. We expect we respect individuals and their experiences. And by sacrificing one individual with the sole purpose of providing for greater individuals in a okay. future, we are rejecting subjectivity and its expression to respect subjectivity and its expression. I would say that it's incoherent. I don't understand what you just so said. Like, what, like, so, for example, I would say that ethics, I'm not a utilitarian. Oh, um, okay. So that's the difference uh, between us then. Yeah, so yeah. We have to first... yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, utilitarianism, I think, uh, is um, abstract and undefined. I think the, 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 be the best example is just what you said before, um, essentially about, you know, how do we respect individuals' um, consent? And we end up on individuals' consent, as if, like, these abstract notions are to, to make a significant. But that's, what we have no, to do that's is also... ground them. But that's also because of a like utilitarian like I. That's also a utilitarian calculation. Like, I'm not saying out of principle that we should respect people's consent. I'm saying that the consequences of us having rules where we just kill people without their consent because of our understanding of what their life is going to be, the consequences of that is going to be probably you know and and net negative to society even in that situation i'm i'm looking at it from a few, from purely a consequential you know not not you know perspective like i'm i'm not talking about like oh even if it's even if it's going to harm less people even if it's a net benefit um, we should still rec respect people's consent no i'm i'm purely talking about uh, thinking about the harm and the benefits that it's going to cause I understand that. And I mean, consequentialism is, um, it's not, um, what's the word? Um, it's not solely in utilitarianism. Uh, and that's something to be said as well. So you can get consequentialism without being a utilitarian. You can believe in con the, the, the value of consequences without saying the greatest good for the greatest number is the principle of utility from which we will act upon. Uh, and that is the normative situation. Um, and I think as well, like with utilitarianism, like, um, when we look at the the differences between let's say utilitarianism and like what I'm advocating for, which is closer to like a threshold deontology, um, um, and a Hegelian stance, so a Hegelian stance would respect consequences. That that's kind of what we're doing, but it also understands that reason itself um, exists between agents. That one individual's reasoning is inherently subjective. It's, it's relying upon their own thinking and it needs to be evaluated before it becomes deductive. We need, you know, verification or falsification for deductive reasoning to function. You know, so for example, the scientific method, or even, even if we were to take something a priori like mathematics, if I was to say, let's say five times 200 equals uh, 1000, uh, and I was to do that, but my mathematical skills were wrong. Let's say I come to five times 200 is 1001, right? Okay. Um, and I assert that to be the case. My reasoning is because uh, is valid. It's simply unsound. Now, um, actually, it might even be valid, but we'll get on that in a minute. But the, 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 let's say my reasoning is flawed in this scenario. Um, I cannot know it. And so what I look for is institutional verification or falsification of my a priori judgment-making possibilities. 
Uh, that's the first basic institutionalization of reason. I'd say even before that, though, um, like the first basic example, but even before that, I would say even my concepts, my conceptualization of reality is grounded within language. As we talked about the self, like the I existing in between in language, it's being held constant. Like this is the Wittgensteinian argument that certain conceptualizations for me to be able to say that this is one, this is two, this is three, and, and hold them constant, what I'm actually doing is applying um, um, a conceptualization of reality from which we hold constant, right? And if we're saying that, 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 that the only way that's being held constant is if my interpretation of the concept is different from my use of the concept. So if I say like, no, like two, uh, like it's hard to describe because I'd have to become like almost incoherent. So if I was to say like, uh, no, two times three is six. And, um, but then I was to say that, uh, you know, in the next sentence, uh, two times four is six. Have I used two in the same way? But I assert that I have used two in the same way and the value of two is the same. That's absolutely possible. Okay. That's absolutely possible if um, the concept of two wasn't being held constant, objective from my uh, use of the concept. So I would be thinking that I've used the concept in the same way twice, when in fact I've used it in two separate ways, uh, but I'm unaware of it. Because okay. I'm subjective okay, okay, and my, okay. my meaning has changed, right? Okay, um, okay. Yeah. This is Wittgenstein's like argument against private language, like the existence of a con concept which is purely individualistic, purely private. Wait, so how it. does how does this relate to utilitarianism? Sorry. Because utilitarians, like if you were relying upon, um, you know, abstract reasoning, I would say that the reasoning of an individual cannot exist independently. I think a utilitarian would have to accept an institutional format in which their reasoning is verified and falsified. I would okay. say even in terms of their own behaviors and in which case we're going to come up with notions like rules duties obligations uh in okay. order to reflect the overall greater good of society like their very oh. value is is going to be institutionalized and removed right. from individualistic reasoning um okay, which is okay. essentially against the utilitarian calculator uh calculator no, view. I mean, like it like, becomes a threshold the ontology no no so you, are you wait so if, by the way um your use of philosophical terms it may, is uh, on another level compared to me right so i'm trying uh, to get i'm trying to um make sure i don't lose you so are you suggesting that um like the use of rules and principles um uh, that will contradict the way that a utilitarian thinks that every time you have to calculate to see what the harm is and what the harm is not but if you do want to be consistent you need to come up with certain principles like certain set of rules that will contradict what the utilitarian is trying to well, get I mean, to. not necessarily, because you can see that yeah. rule utilitarians, right? Like, you know, like okay. John Stuart Mill, yeah. uh, maybe. Yeah, because, kind of because, because I, could, <laughs> I could argue that from a utilitarian perspective, maybe sometimes you need to come up with certain standards. You can't do a calculation every fucking time like you want to mm -hmm. do something. So even from a utilitarian perspective, you come up with principles and rules and, uh, you know, you come up with institutions uh, that come up with these rules. Not because, because you see that it's so inconvenient and inefficient for you to have to calculate everything every fucking time. The, but the, that's also, but that's also utilitarian. That's a, just that's just a utilitarian realizing the limitations of what we can accomplish. And at the end of the day, the method that is being used will give us the highest amount of utility. So it's it's still utilitarian. Except the thing, the difference is, is that if a utilitarian comes across a rule which it, which they have calculated as inefficient to respect utility, then they would be obliged to not follow that rule, right? Yeah, but because they re because they realize the the wider consequences of like my you, point for, is my yeah. point is is that their reasoning individualistically is incapable of defying institutional deductive rational evidenced proof that their individual reasoning until institutionalized until proven by um you know to yeah, be yeah. the case deductively in which the rule would then be modified and changed is wrong they cannot assert it's not that it's wrong right. it's, it's not wrong it, but it's not right it's not it's not wrong but you realize why you can't expect people to follow this even you're right because it's just not the most efficient way of getting things done well it's right? not just that no no it's like you can't know you are right until it's right. been institutionalized. Okay, but so, you, you, so, okay, I agree, I agree, I agree. But even if you think you're right, because 
even if you believe that you're right, but you can't be sure, you understand mm -hmm. you could for, even from a utilitarian perspective, you could you could understand why this should not be followed until, as you say, it is in, is institutionalized, right? You know what but I mean? It'd like be more to say you understand, it's it's not it, it's not worth following. On, it's, not, uh, it's not even it's not even rational until it's institutional. Right? Yeah, but that's so, not against so, utilitarianism. You could argue you see, that the, the difference the difference is a utilitarian would say that the rule exists only to benefit the consequences which are calculated individualistically. Like the oh, difference, what I'm saying is, is that, that what a, a you follow. The, so oh, like I mean, it doesn't. So like, I, rule, I don't like, think individualistically the, is defined within utilitarianism. It's not necessarily defined. I would say that like, right. you could say that like um, you could have, let's say, a normative system within utilitarianism. I suppose that would be um, like institutional. So you could probably have. I mean, um, if you could show me like, I mean, I agree that this is institutional model that you have. If that's going to lead into the highest amount of utility, then fuck individuals, individualized, you know, calculations. Go with it. Like my utilitarianism would put me on the side of institutionalizing. Mm -hmm. the, the standard but at least we like, we'll agree on that and, and i think what i'm trying to do is kind of make the separation between uh rule utilita utilitarianism which is um you know to respect the rule so long as it um was it it would be um uh respect the rule because of the consequences right. um and threshold the ontology which is very similar which is rules which are being respected in regards to the consequences except we do our duty and then when our duty breaks down we reflect upon the consequences and Reevaluate what our can duties I, can are. Can I give an example so that maybe this makes uh, to see if I've, I've got this? Like, let's say, for mm -hmm. example, I'm in the uh, it's 2 a.m. and I'm uh, driving a car. Yeah. And I hit a red light mm -hmm. and I look around and there's like not a single goddamn fucking car anywhere. So I'm like, I'm just going to drive, right? And mm -hmm. the cop stops me and I get a ticket. I'm like, what the hell? Like, look at the consequences of my action. This important. Like, why is this? You've made this worse. Yeah. Like, look at. Like, there's nothing. There's no reason why I shouldn't have crossed the red light. Like, there's not a another car or a pedestrian, till miles away. But no, I'm at the wrong here because imagine if we change the rules to like, okay, don't cross the red light unless you're sure that you're not gonna hit somebody. That would be a very bad rule. Right. You cannot you cannot change the rules like that. Like even if you could think like my reasoning is better than this rule right now, it would be a very shitty. It would be a very dangerous world we live in if we change the rules to say never cross a red light unless you could guarantee with your own judgment that you're not going to cause any harm to anybody. So that so would make the world a more dangerous place. The rules themselves contain the reasoning rather than the consequences containing the reasoning. If you understand that the rules are in reflect of the consequences, that's fair enough. But that, 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 that's fair enough. That's Hegelian as well. And uh, right. I would agree. Again, I would think ultimately yeah. the institutions care about the consequences of overall society. But right, the right. rules themselves hold individuals to account for rationality, not the other way around. Like individuals don't hold the rules to account and then modify them. So like what we would right. see is that through application of the rules, we could see that then comes contradictions within the rule. Like this rule is meant to increase public road safety and it's making it worse. Uh, we ultimately reevaluate the rule institutionally. Okay. Um, that's what I would argue normatively needs to happen. But a utilitarian from at least all the utilitarians I've ever spoke to typically argue that um, the rule exists because of the consequences. If the consequences were to change, that we should either, uh, in an act utilitarian sense, we should avoid it. Like we should just break the rule. No. Bollocks to no, it. No. Um, and then in a rule utilitarian sense, it's that we should modify the rule. The rule yeah, is not adequate. Right. 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 But the rules but we only shouldn't being... break the rule until we manage to come up with a way to change the yeah. rule. My yeah. point would be to say that we need to follow the rule. Yes. And that through following the rule, the rule will eventually show itself to be inadequate, which will allow itself to be modified. But until exactly. that point, but until yeah. that point, that's not that's not utilitarian. <laughs> okay, well, I, I mean, I didn't know that. You, I thought utilitarian is just wanting to make sure that we get the highest amount of utility. And to me, that that method gets you the highest amount of utility. So yeah, I mean, I, it's I a mean, respect I of the consequences. But like, I think right. it's like consequentialism versus like the principle of the utility, which is the greatest good for the greatest number. Like, you right. could say that the. But rules... I think that method gets the high. 
I, I, I think that method that you're that we are agreeing on, that me and you are agreeing on, gets the highest amount of goods for the highest number. So I, I still agree. think that I, it, I, I, so, I agree. There's, so there's actually, there, that there's actually a theory of my... utilitarianism which kind of coincides with this, which is called perfect utilitarianism, um, which I don't really have a problem with. Um, so we agree. So I don't yeah. care. I don't know what the but, terminology but is. More, but... more, moreover, <laughs> I think utilitarians as well, they respect individual, like, for example, individual um, aspects of pain and pleasure, right? Suffering and, uh, and, and well-being. Um, well, someone who's doing their duty uh, in a Hegelian sense, respects um, expression of subjectivity, so freedom. Okay, so I would say that freedom is what we are actually respect respecting, not um, not simply the aspects of pain and pleasure. And the reason I'd say that is because when we consider the foundations of ethics, um, what we are doing is trying to bring, um, I think, innately, inherently, we desire what is the only thing that we can desire is the greatest good for ourselves. Um, that like we have um, um, an egoistical drive in built into the mechanism that is a human to achieve pleasure and avoid pain. Now that isn't where the the, the trip ends, like in the sense that we don't care about other people, but that's where we will begin, and that's the foundation of ethics. And so the foundation of ethics in terms of mutual cooperation begins through the recognition of that I need to recognize what will and will not. Um, bring the greatest overall benefit to my life and avoid the greatest uh, I mean, overall it's not, harm. That is not necessarily true for, like, are you trying to say, like, freedom is the foundation because every every human has the drive to do this on their own, so we should just give them the freedom to be able to do this on their own? Is that something it, what you're suggesting? No, no. I, I, what I'm, well, I mean, what I'm actually going to say is that freedom exists only cooperatively. And that ethics actually is the greatest expression of human freedom, um, which overall relates to notions of right, which allows us to achieve those I interests. Mean, it, I mean, we don't give freedom to children to eat whatever the fuck because they Because they're want. not rational. Right. Children aren't, children aren't free inherently because so, they're not rational. So yeah, like, so, so ethic, ethics in that situation would not about giving freedom. In fact, in some situation, situation ethic would be for children, for example, would be to limit their freedom. Well, it depends. Like you have to limiting. do your. It depends you on what you mean by limiting that freedom. You see, like this is the You're point. Like, you like, cannot, you to cannot be free. decide not to go free. No, I was going to say right. to be free doesn't mean to be unrestricted. So uh, um, that's quite a naturalistic view of freedom. So that you would say that um, freedom is um, to get whatever I want, <laughs> right? Um, I don't know what. How does freedom come to this? I don't understand because I think. The only reason why freedom comes into ethics at all is because, I, to me, it's all about pain and pleasure. I mean, they're both the same, two sides of the same coin. But the only reason freedom is even relevant is because the the pleasure that we get out of being free. And also the, the pleasure that we are free to go experience, you know, freedom gives us more opportunity to gain more pleasure and avoid more harm. To me, at the end of the day, it's nothing other than pleasure and harm. Freedom well, is just. I would just... say that ethics, ethics is a is a performative action for one. So, like my ability to actually perform what is right and wrong is it's it's a it's a verb. It's not something that's like a noun. So, like like uh, like you know, pain and pleasure, they essentially just attribute to experiential like uh, data, like uh, you know the what right. is uh, phenomenologically good or bad of a, a situation. Well, like, right, right isn't about that. Right is about whether I'm doing uh, what is logically justified in the scenario to bring around the consequences. And that's what I think that what, what, what why I say freedom when we talk about ethics, because ethics doesn't work on a purely, um, um, on a purely like, uh, we calculate what is the best scenario uh, and then um, put that into place. Because what we are doing is we are not respecting the individual reasoning of the people who are actually constructing the ethic, which is then to be respected. The individual reasoning being, I am one to act in such a, like I am an I am a performative actor in this ethical scenario, and I require justify justified true beliefs in order to um, accomplish um, my goals, my desire, my end product, which is pain and pleasure, which makes it right. a performance. Right. So I'm happy to say freedom ultimately relates to pain and pleasure. But what we are talking about is the freedom of the individuals to actually perform throughout their lives to obtain 
the best possible scenario that they are um they can act with justifications and, and only truth. because only because they prefer it only because it gives them pleasure to be free to make those decisions well it's kind of like the chicken yep. and the egg right it's it, it can't it can't be kind of um divorced from each other in this respect so like look at it right. like this. i mean i mean the chicken and the egg actually evolutionary can but it's like um if you look the if you look at the like the occurrence of desire which is the the drive the action urging the action urging drive to achieve the consequence and um the experience of uh, those consequences they are one in the same in subjectivity that's something that can't be kind of divorced like you were a subjective agent which means you experience desire which means you experience positive and negative phenomenological experiences yeah and okay. what i'm saying is that that is what we are respecting. That's subjectivity as a whole. We're not simply respecting, you know, the phenomenological experiences. I don't want to you know, tap a drill into your head, wire head you so you feel dopamine constantly. That's not something that you're actually interested in. What you're actually interested in is um, the fulfillment of desire, which brings uh, around a po positive phenomenological experience as a reward, and then the continues yeah, as but a... Yeah, okay, so again, this is like a circular thing. The only reason why we're not interested in that is because we, most people would not like that, right? So well, it's, it's, again, it's, it's, it, because it's about preference, it's not about like, oh yeah, tie me to a machine and just make me feel like pleasure for ever without me like doing anything. Most like, people would not prefer that. So again, it's about preferences it's about what people want which means it's about pleasure and pain i mean if we did live in a world where people were like you know what this is i don't like freedom i don't like have to have agency well, people hate freedom actually i mean if you look at it like it's responsibility and, and people flee from it all the time that's kind of like sartre's point um i don't think so i mean i mean if you think freedom is unrestricted and like say having more money and you're more free and people love freedom, if, especially through Americans, you know, like uh, the, the American dream. Okay, so how does this, how does this get uh, tied into veganism? Sorry. Because veganism. the whole point I'm saying is that we are rational self-determining agents and that our okay. rational self-determination is what is being respected within the institutions. That I'm trying to act in my life in the best possible way. And in that, I find that the best possible way is always to follow my duty. It is to do the right thing. The right thing being the institutionally dedu deduced right thing. Uh, follow the rule. Right. OK. Um, that rule ultimately leading uh, con containing a, a reference to the consequence in overall um, abstract reasoning, which exists within the state and the society itself. But that's separate from a utilitarian view, which would argue that individuals are making calculations from to create the rules. I'm saying that the rules are enacted out, which ultimately um, show them uh, to be uh, internally inconsistent which then change to modify to respect the consequences okay. like kind of flips it on its head it ultimately right. the same ends are being respected but there's a there's a difference there All so right. the important aspect there as well is the respect of the individual um who in, inherently values themselves inherently values their own experiences and so has entered ethics willingly to cooperate to create the greatest overall outcome for everyone because they themselves are included within that outcome um, epistemologically. I respect subjectivity because I am a subject and that subjectivity, when it's at its greatest expression, will bring the greatest respect for me. Therefore, I am rational when I act to respect subjectivity. I am doing the right thing. Okay. Now, yeah. that's what I'm saying we are doing. So when we are, when okay. you say like, you know, this has been the longest, I had to half explain Hegelian philosophy, so I'm really sorry that I've had to go that's through all this. <laughs> but when yeah. we talk about the bunny and we talk about whether we're doing the right thing to bring the bunny into existence, uh, in order to create overall well-being for another bunny, for for the rest of these bunnies, I'd say that we aren't respecting the individual so the individual uh, experiences of the bunny, which are overall uh, the ethical epistemological foundations of the bunny's pleasure and pain in the first place. We have rejected the subjectivity of the bunny to respect subjectivity as a whole, which is inherently contradictory. What? We are creating. Well, we wait, do so the same thing with children. How do we do the same thing with children? No, wait. So, what are you arguing? Like, I, I don't mean like we kill children and eat them. <laughs> I mean, we are. I mean, I don't know about. Children. Where we do are, you live? <laughs> we are. <laughs> we are atheists, so we do eat babies. But I, I mean, I am at least. 
But I don't know. Uh, but no. But I'm just saying, like, are you saying that we need to respect the bunny's freedom? I'm saying that we're like, well, I mean, like the, the bunny um, is incapable of self-determination. I mean, that's because right. it's, it's not free. But so what we're we respecting that, what... is is the bunny's um, subjectivity. Um, that's that's what essentially that mean, how we exactly? gain our own freedom. And, and so like, like when we respect subjectivity, we are considering okay. what is in my interests beyond my um, like, you know, like when I go to them traffic lights, I know that I could speed through, maybe right. even not get caught. And that is my preference. But it's in my interest to be rational because I know that is where the justification, like the true justified belief exists, which ultimately respects my actual interests. Right. Okay, but how does that translate to the bunny? So in terms of the bunny, okay. right, in terms of the bunny, the when we are respecting the... There's no rule to say that, that there's currently right now no rules telling us that we shouldn't be eating what, the bunny. What I'm, say, what I'm saying is that ethics itself is based on subjectivity. Individualistically, that I, that I care about not simply pleasure abstract and pain abstract, but that I care about a subject's experience of pain and pleasure. No, wait a minute. And the, the reason why I understand why the cop is giving me a fine is because at the end of the day, I only care about pain and pleasure, and I understand that we can't live in a society where they come up with rules that says, hey, cr pass the red light. In okay, in but then case. if I was to... So at the end of the day, it still comes down to pain and pleasure. Yeah, but if I was to say, why do, you care, why, do you, why do you care about pain and pleasure? I can't help it. Okay, so I... you care about... Yeah, but you don't have to care about everyone's pain and pleasure, so why do you care about, like, everyone's pain and pleasure? I don't. You just care about your own? No. I care about mine, and I don't know. I think there's limited sympathy that each one of us has. It's not an unlimited resource that I could tap into. So I don't know how many people. Psychological egoist. No, I mean, how many people I can care about? Like, some people say it could be only 150 people. I don't know. Um, but that's but not necessarily I do care. who we consider in our actions, is it? Like, I mean, K emotionally no, I mean, is separate I... to, to what we consider rationally. No, I mean, I care about the people that I'm made aware of their suffering, I guess, if once they come into my consciousness about, like, the fact that once I get, you know, I, you know okay, you... I'll give you an abstract example. Let's say you were given the option to um, help or hinder someone who uh, you will never meet in your life. Uh, which would you choose? You can help them or hinder them. It has no impact upon yourself. What cost to me? Um, like no, no, no real in issue to you. Oh, like, you know. okay, great. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. It makes me yeah, feel good. Yeah. Okay. Right. You're doing it to make you feel good. Is that the only reason? Yeah. That's the only reason. Of course. Anybody that denies that is not being honest. No, you I get disagree. A, you get a warm, fuzzy feeling for being, from being kind to people. No, I don't think that's why we're, I don't think that's why we do the right thing. I think that to be honest, like even if someone like, let's say, um, uh, look at it, like people who, um, like I detest, um, let's say like, like like pedophiles, murderers, rapists, things like that. Child right? ministers, not pedophiles. Yeah, yeah, child yeah. Child. Now, many people action, might say we should give them the death penalty um, overall or, or torture them even. I would say that would be wrong. That two wrongs don't make a right. Even though I dislike them, even though I, 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 that, that suffering might even bring me enjoyment, I'd say that'd be wrong. Yeah, I mean, I, for, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, so, yeah, but because I understand, okay, so here's the thing. But even, if, expect... even if it was beyond reasonable doubt that we could prove that only the only people that have this experience were those that 100% did it, I'd say it was still wrong. Yeah, I was I agree with you because I don't expect policies to be written based on my personal interest. Like, he, for example, he, the example I give, but like, let's even, say, let's say, like, a mother. I agree that would, would prefer people to suffer. I don't think that it's that's... not the best thing for society to do that. I don't think it would be the best thing for society. Like, for example, let's say like a uh, person, like a mother who lost their son to ISIS. Okay. And now we all of a sudden catch an ISIS member and they went like, oh, let's burn them alive. I'm like, no, this is, we need due process. We need a court. We can't just like, these are prisoners of war. We can't just do this right now. But if this mom is like, what are you talking about? These people, these people killed my son. Burn these motherfuckers alive. They burn my son alive. Burn them alive. I'm going to, you know, if I argue like, no, uh, this is not the right way. You know, we can't just like we're in the middle of the desert. Right the right This is not the right way. We need to. But I understand. I mean, my expectations from that mom is not, I'm, I'm not going to think the mom is wrong. 
my expectations from those institutions that you that you mentioned, you know, the government and everything, the, the judicial system and everything, is different from the mom. The mom is not in the wrong, but I don't well, think ask the mom. ourselves, what is the fair punishment for the crime? It's not about fair. In that situation, from a utilitarian perspective, I don't care about what's fair. I'm I'm not seeking uh, revenge. Is not the right, not what brings the best thing to society. We're trying to avoid more harm to society, right? Uh, that's all we're trying to do. We're trying to increase utility. We need to, if we live in a society that we kill people without due process, we're going to have more people suffering, right? Well, it's not just it's not just that. I mean, it's reasoning itself is is uh, uh, is a formulation of equality, right? Like if I th- if I was to say that, um, my respect of your ability to tell me whether I'm right or wrong is fundamentally based on my acknowledgement that you are equally capable of of reasoning to the same standard that I am, then I have to respect that you are capable of falsifying my assertion, whatever I assert to be true. I mean, I don't care about your, I don't, I don't think every, my my reasoning and your reasoning. The the reason I'm saying this is because when we talk about, when you say you don't care about fairness, I'd say that that fairness exists as an expression of that inherent equality, that we are both capable of making rational deduced but rationally uh, deduced arguments capable. in relation to what should or should not be done. Now, I don't think we are capable, actually. I think that's why we come up with these institutions. Just like we have the scientific mo- model because we suck at logic, so we need to come up with measures to keep checking with our biases and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like We have to come up with systems to adjust for all of that. Of course, uh, all of this is performed by individuals, by particular right. agents. Uh, yeah, but again, we come, we have came up with the scientific method is like we came up with ways to try to reduce all the flaws that we individuals have in their logic. In mm-hmm. the same way, we come up with other institutions because we suck at morality as well, right? So because we suck at morality, we come up with institutions that you know adjusts for all the biases and all the flawed mm, ways of fairness and all that stuff you know we like we the, and you know to adjust for that is you know the the rules and the moral code that a society comes um, up with if they has good institutions ignores individuals reasoning you know it comes up you know each individual's reasoning on their own and comes up with methods that gives you most consistent answers uh, overall right like mm-hmm. and and the, the goal is not to satisfy our desire for revenge or our, you know, thirst for fairness. The goal of a good judicial system would be to, to come up our with, interests. yeah, to to reduce them. Like, if, for example, if we punish somebody, it's not because they deserve it. It's because we come up with a punishment to demotivate other people for carrying the same crime. Oh, is that your dog? <laughs> yeah. It's um, okay. Let them let him let him or her do. That. It's fine. Charlie, lie down. Good boy. Oh, he's okay. been fine now. Um, I, I mean, I, I disagree. I don't think that we purely act on terms of mo- uh, on terms of um, like when we punish a criminal that we do it purely at a, at a stage of motivation. Should, I mean, I'm not saying we do. We sh- I'm saying that would be the most effective. Or even if we do. should, like I, I don't think so. I think that we that um, that the individual who acts to defy the rationality of um, of the society is acting irrationally, and the punishment itself is an acknowledgement of their subjectivity, that they were rational and able to break the law, that they themselves chose to break the law and they were un- they understood that they chose to break the law. We accept right. that they are subjective agents, that they are capable of making their own choices, that they're adults and that they're rational. And so we punish them to, re- to ensure the continued existence of the institution and uh, in terms of respecting the subjectivity of individuals who produce in- institutions. We would say that they are they themselves uh, are subjective agents, and they should be treated as subjective agents, like as in rash, rationally. But can you capable. define what you mean by subjective agent? I just want to. Uh, I just mean someone who's uh, like. Um, uh, I mean, like when I say like, uh, I guess I probably should have said moral agent, but um, or ethical agent. The point I was trying to make really is that they're agents capable of their own reasoning and rationality. That they're capable of Wait, understanding. Wait, so why is that important to you? Because what I mean, sub- like, look because... at it like this, right? If you were to let's say, let's say someone has a learning disability and then they commit a crime, um, would you say that they've committed the crime uh, the same as an adult? Let's say they were incapable of knowing it was a crime because of their learning disability. So, 
Okay, have they so committed that, a crime? If that's what you're saying, then why do you, the bunnies are not able to make any of the like they're less able? Yeah, to make. yeah, I know that. So, I know that. So, so what? I don't so why hold is that? To moral standards. I don't. <laughs> I'm holding yeah, you to moral standards. But why are we why are we carrying them as why are we talking about them as subjective agents? Because th- when if, we talk about like expressing subjectivity, that's what we inherently try to do: express our subjectivity on the world. And how do you, what do you, what do you, what do you mean by express expressing subjectivity? Like how, well, how, how, would how does one that, person? How does a person? Express because when I, when I, okay, so an expression of subjectivity would be making a choice, <laughs> like uh, okay. choosing action A and then B to. Uh, so you're saying you're saying because bun- bunnies are able to make choices. We have to respect their ability to make choices. No, I'm not talking about the bunny's ability to make choices. Well, I mean, I, I am in a minute. I mean, I'll, I'll expect in somewhat, but not really. What I'm saying is that when we respect their subjectivity, what we exp- what we are respecting is that they are individuals who experience pain and pleasure. And we ex- and what we respect is not abstract pain and pleasure, but an individual's experience of pain and pleasure. And so. I mean, what, experience of pain and pleasure is the same thing as saying pain and pleasure because pain and pleasure is nothing but an experience. So you don't need no, to no, say experience. Abstract, you don't need to add experience to that because it's already an experience. Well, I mean, yeah, what well, is I pain mean, and pleasure I'm, other than an experience? Well, I mean, when we talk about abstract, the, 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 this is the issue with utilitarianism. It leads to abstract conclusions which don't necessarily reflect the overall experience of given agents. You could have, Wait, let's what? say, Repeat a that. slave class in utilitarianism okay. which is uh, calculatedly justified in terms of a pain-pleasure ratio which does, which is not justifiable if what we are respecting is not simply pain and pleasure, but the experience of an individual uh, and their interests. I mean, themselves. when you say pain and pleasure, you do you're talking. What is pain and pleasure other than an experience of an individual? Like, how is that a different? You're just repeating the same. Because like if you're I'm saying, respecting uh, the you're individual saying themselves. You're saying we don't respect pain and pleasure. We're respecting an individual's experience. That's just the same the same thing in two different ways. Well, it's not because like if How I'm respecting an individual, if I'm respecting an individual's experience, that if I'm saying that this individual, their experience themselves, of themselves is is essentially their inti- is their weight in ethics, right? It's their consideration of why they end up ethics in the first place. Then but that's, define... you're saying all of that when you mention pain and pleasure, because then, th- there's no other way to have pain and pleasure other than an individual experience or something. I mean, well, that already is inherent within the definition of a pain and pleasure. What I'm saying is to create an unequal scenario in which we would, which is totally fine in utilitarianism because it relies upon purely abstract concepts like universals, pain and pleasure. Okay. Then, this would be justifiable, that a slave class would be justifiable. In fact, what? someone How, in wait, that what? slave wait, class... Wait, 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 wait a minute. I don't want to, be, I don't want to come <laughs> as a pro-slavery. Can you explain that again? So like, let's say like we were to create a slave class um, based right. on pure pain and pleasure. We were to calculate that in this scenario that having a slave class to um, overall... It's okay. Uh, him... Overall... No, no, it's, all, it's, it's I'm, I'm just stopping from himself, actually. Um the uh, to overall create the a greater well-being and reduce suffering okay and okay. um, let's say we would determine that it is going to create a more pleasurable scenario and a less like suffering scenario like suffering overall will go down because what we are doing is replacing all the suffering in one place rather than having it mitigated across the entirety of society uh take the ones that you know the, the you know omelas uh, that's a good way to look at it maybe you know, babies perpetually suffering for a society to be free and, and live a great uh, experience, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, think of it like that. And like utilitarianism would say, like, let's say you are part of the slave class. You should accept your place within the slave class because your place within the slave class ultimately is the rational thing to do. It is the betterment of society. What Wait, I'm how, saying... How does that work? I don't understand. Like the slave, you're, are you saying the slavery would this line of my line of reasoning would excuse the slave class? But if you could give, if you could what? Like give me an exact scenario. Give me some okay, example. Okay, let's say let's say the like the slave class was to remove the necessity for uh, menial labor for everyone except that class. Everyone else would have the possibility of. Um, learning and growing to the greatest extent, living lives which are always going to uh, contain well-being, uh, in the sense that they are going to well, be we would fed, know about shelter, and have food, and we would water, shelter. The resource distribution of society will ultimately react in the majority's favour, that they will be able to live lives which are uncontrolled uh, by no, the government, they're uncontrolled by institutions. 
you know, they basically live in like Star Trek and they, these others, this slave class, they essentially perpetually create this society from which the others are able to enjoy en masse. I don't think that's possible in the world that we live today. And that matters. I mean, mm. I mean, we, uh, it's just a hypothetical. So I know, I know. But the thing, the thing, and I, and I like hypotheticals, but I also like to sh explain why some hypotheticals will, will never come Oh, like if it's been empirically impossible, like it's not necessarily no, it doesn't make it logically no, but, impossible, though, does it? Yeah, but the, the reason why. Yeah, but it's good to explain why that hypothetical would not. In the real world, would not make the world a better place to because to show why my line of reasoning would not excuse that, because in the real world. If we if we have humans that are OK with that we're probably going to be fucked in so many different other ways. You know what I mean? Like the, well, I mean, that's, a, that's, a, that's the, an assumption. The, the I mean, you the, could, you could, the I mean there's no species. reason why you couldn't have humans that are necessarily, let's say, fascists. But um, otherwise, but I mean... But that's like, not look, our like, species. I don't know what species... I mean, our species about. does this. <laughs> our species has done that this a lot. <laughs> yeah, it does it a lot, but our species has managed to get better and better. Well, it hasn't, actually. I mean, I mean, if you look, there's more slavery now than there was in the Roman Empire. Yeah, but I'm saying per capita basis. Okay, so the average individual. And also, you know, yeah, but I'm I'm just saying that we, I mean, we have we have become a lot better. Come on, we have less suffering, we have less poverty. I mean, have, I mean, we'll have we'll have more we wealth disparity, um, ever no, in in human history. Well, I don't care about wealth um, disparity. I only care about. Have, uh, we have a population size which is much greater in 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 uh, poorer countries, which are perpetually starving and we have the dying of lowest mal number of we have the lowest number of uh, poverty. We have the lowest number, both percentage and total number wise. Uh, we have the lowest number of death from violence, both percentage wise and total number. We have much better health, life expectancy. Loyal oh, yeah, uh, there is definitely some. Disease. I the, mean, people the, are happy. The point of what I'm saying is that I don't think that uh, an abstract scenario in which um, people adopt an ideology which is to persecute one class and maintain another class is ultimately um, impossible. I don't think that's. No, it's uh, not. A, it's uh, not impossible, but I'm just saying that we are tr we are working for the, for a world where we, I mean. We have shown that we're capable as a species to not be okay with that. Yeah, and that, that we, we go we backwards, want is equality. and we and if we go backwards, if like if even I'm saying in a in a realistic world, this a society that is okay with having a slave class as long as the rest of the world is okay, that society is going to suffer. That is not, I mean, even if that's what they think is going to get, those people, who in that, that line society of thinking, is going to suffer? Huh? Who in that society is going to suffer? Everyone? Everybody. Like, that's Why? not going to be, that, that is an unhealthy way of Unhealthy thinking. how? Here, for example, let's say, like, I'm just, you know, so what I'm saying is, like, let's say we could torture a child to make the world, the rest of the world a better place, right? Mm -hmm. Almost, yeah. The, the more people we have that are disgusted by that idea and say, no, fuck it. But the better the world, the worse, I mean, the, the, worse the consequences are going to become because they'll leave on alas and the no, overall benefit saying, like, of them will reduce. No, yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying like the way we, we, we have to look at humans as emotional animals that their way of, so I think the, the result is going to be the opposite of what we expect. Right? So if people are saying, more if more people are saying fuck it sacrifice this child for the rest of the world the more so utilitarian yep yeah, but i'm saying from a utilitarian perspective the more people like that we have the more cold you know these people have that disgust that disgust is going not going to drive them in a way to be like you, if you if you think about humans as little robots that are just driven by their emotions I'm just saying that you might think that, I mean, you're right to say that the, the humans that are disgusted by this idea are less logical, but their emotional attitude, if we have more of that, more of that disgust, more of that disgust towards thinking that we're sacrificing a child, indirectly will make a world a better place. 
You know what I mean? Like, I don't we are we're so. not we're not like logical robots that just constantly is calculating everything. Our sympathy and our ethics is coming from an emotional pers- from an emotional place, and which dictates a lot of our behavior. I just think like that disgust is a helpful thing indirectly, even if it's logically doesn't make any sense. I want more people to be disgusted by that because because it's going to drive more that I want that level of sympathy. It's not it might not seem logical, but in the long run, that level of sympathy will make the world a better place. Do you know what I mean? Well, I mean, like Even the if whole it's example the wrong of Omelas, the whole example of Omelas is to show that that sympathy will ultimately diminish the overall consequences. But in it's the wrong. Problem. But I'm just saying in our world, that's wrong because in our world, humans are not. I mean, other, I mean is it wrong? like look at it, look at it like this. I mean, that's true. Humans aren't calculators, but humans have a, a great way of being willfully ignorant and humans have a great way of um, also have a tribalistic morality. Um, let, let caring about one class over example. another without without let, even considering another class. In fact, I think animal let, agriculture... Let me, tell me, let me tell you this. Like, for example, from a logical perspective, I know what to do to, like, for example, lose weight if I want to, okay? Mm-hmm. I know all the tricks. I know everything. Like, but it's not as easy as just knowing the... Cal- I completely you know, agree. I completely right? agree. Right? It's not that, as yeah. easy, right? It's about the emotional drives that need to be there for me to make the right decisions. It's not mm-hmm. just about knowing the right calculations. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just saying for, for humans to make decisions that eventually make the world a better place, you don't need just the right calculations and the right data. You also need the right emotional drive. Okay. Well, I, I mean, and, I would agree I'm, that. But I'm saying that the emotional, dr- and I'm saying that the emotional drive that makes humans say, no, don't sacrifice the child for a better world, that emotional drive, the more of that is going to end up making the world a better place, not the cold, hard calculations of what's going to increase the utility. I mean, I mean know, that's, you know, that's essentially against utilitarianism, though, yeah? No, it's not, because at the end of the day, I want the higher emotional drive because the, I think that's going to end up to a highest amount of utility. Well, so not, you, you think, but there's just, no necessary reason to believe that. that. I, I just don't think you need that on an individual level, right? I, mean, I just could, think like have... on, an, on an individual level, I think you need to exercise that that sympathy like it's a muscle, like it's a muscle. Do you know what I mean? I mean, that's I, I, what I, I need. I, from I, an I will say this, right? Like first, like all the people in Omelas could be eth- uh, uh, empathetic, caring individuals um, to everyone but that child. There, there's no reason to think that. Um, also, there's there's something to be said. One, you said like um, when you talk about like losing weight, and you're saying like it isn't simply when I do the right thing. I'm not simply considering uh, an abstract notion of what I should be doing, as in like what will bring around the greatest consequences. I'm instead uh, thinking about my emotional drives, my first order desires. I would completely agree. And I would say that ethics exists in second order desires, the contemplation of those desires and which one I should and should not act upon. Okay. Um, so if I'm giving okay, two so, two options to uh, in terms of motivation to eat eat an animal and not eat an animal, um, second order desires would be the deliberations between both drives. Wait, can you give an example? So let's say it was to eat an animal, uh, the desire because I like the taste of the animal, and the other desire was to uh, not eat the animal because I I'm trying to care about the animal, right? Or even, yeah, both of them even is I would argue, I would even argue, be rational. But we'll get onto that later. But let's well, say there's two no, separate. Yeah, that's we, my point. That's my point. That you're being emotional in both ways, right? One of them, you just like the taste of the meat a lot. One, the other one is just like you emotionally care about that. Like it's just an emotion. It's, no, it's all I, about I, your emotion. I, I, as I said, I, I will get onto that in a minute. Where I say I think right, that okay. it can be okay. through pure reason. But okay, okay. let's say it's just the deliberation between two two drives. You're right okay. in saying that the first order desires are what we consider. Now. I would say that a first order desire that exists in all humans is the desire for knowledge. And I would say that the desire for knowledge is inherent um, simply because it allows us to achieve our own ends. That you cannot desire the um, the end, like a, a result, like or desire anything without the knowledge of how to obtain it. So knowledge is always valuable because it allows us to calculate with the greatest certainty what is going to be the greatest overall outcome uh, for ourselves. And, and that allows us to actually I don't act like, in the I don't like, world. I don't know if that's true because the desire for knowledge is like 
it's called curiosity, right? I mean, sometimes, sometimes it's not the de desire not I wouldn't for say knowledge. It's curiosity. Uh, okay, but I'm just saying that the desire for knowledge, so if if it's if you're if you get your other desire satisfied because of the knowledge, then the the, the the knowledge was not the goal. The 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 knowledge was the tool. I think that when the knowledge is the goal, I call that curiosity. But when the knowledge is the tool, then you weren't desire you weren't desiring knowledge. You were the, desiring the, uh, the point I'm saying you were is desiring that you cannot... something else, and knowledge was just a method of getting it. I see that you can't. It, my point would be saying that, like, one, even knowledge of oneself to know what I want is an aspect of knowledge, right? And so, yeah, but you, that doesn't mean you desire it. No, but it means that knowledge cannot. That knowledge must be desired. Like, no, as it, in, should, it doesn't necessarily mean that. It's extrinsic. Its value That's is extrinsic, not. but that doesn't oh. mean it. It must always be desired. Like, it's like, no yeah. matter what I want, I'm going to need knowledge, and therefore, yeah, you're knowledge going to need it. But sometimes value. you don't. Sometimes you don't desire it, but you just have to have it because of something else you desire. But even to know, even to have an understanding of what I want, even yeah. to understand what I, I want, I need knowledge. Yeah, so but knowledge even in that situation, so that doesn't the mean you The whole necessarily... point is, the more knowledge I have, the greater overall ability to gain my desire in the end. So I understand desire that and... logically follows, yeah. but the, just because it logically follows, that doesn't mean that des the desire logically follows as well. You mean you're saying that, that you could have a like you could um you could have a first order desire to not know like for example uh, people who flee into willful ignorance I mean there's a great example. No, I mean like for example I want to I want to let's say I want to look like I have a six pack or something right I know I have to exercise and I know that without exercise and a good diet I'm not going to get a six pack but just because I want a six pack that doesn't mean I want <laughs> I I want the exercise and the diet maybe I don't want that. You know, I don't desire that. I understand that logically the six pack only follows a good diet and exercise. I I know that logically that one follows the other one, but that desire doesn't translate. Even though I have the desire for well, the I'm just can, doing it reluctantly. Right? You can say that you can you can deny, you know, like your 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 desire for knowledge. You could say that you did de you deny your desire to act in accordance with that knowledge. That does not mean that you do not desire knowledge. I, um, I I didn't say it, it doesn't mean I do, maybe I do desire it maybe I don't I'm just saying just because it logically follows it doesn't mean the desire also follows sometimes the desire doesn't follow no yeah but I would say that like well one I'd say that we exist in a a plethora of uh, possibilities and I think that uh, ultimately um, our desires can be modified by our knowledge you know uh, uh, yeah yeah I agree with that I agree with that um, but. Uh, the, the, again, the point I'm trying to get, get out of here okay, sorry, is sorry. that, like, uh, is that, like, when we're when we're coming to these conclusions about what, what what I'm trying to do within my life, I'm I'm doing it in respect to my overall goal for knowledge and my epistemological certainty that I will actually achieve what is good for me, then I will achieve what is good in general, right? So I create, let's say, conceptualizations like that allow me to achieve. Um, a deductive notion from what will actually allow me to uh, a deductive. Uh, a deductive, deductively justified conclusion of what will actually be good for me. So, for example, I might think I want heroin. However, once I start communicating with uh, people who, you know, have taken heroin, people who, um, right. you know, understand what it does to us, I might realize that heroin is bad and so I don't want it. Ultimately, I've then, uh, you know, right. given in my preference to my okay. interests, my overall rationally deduced conclusion of interest within, okay. within the institution yeah now what i'm doing there is epistemologically i've created concepts which are objective from myself but include myself it includes me it includes you i associate myself with you to associate my experiences of heroin with your experiences of heroin with other people's experiences of heroin okay. and overall our experiences of pain pleasure uh, and so on which is why they're universal concepts these universal concepts themselves are based on particular experiences of agents. They cannot be divorced from them, otherwise it will become irrational. My point is that with the bunny, if we divorce the individual experience of the bunny and uh, we decide that we will not consider the individual experience of that bunny, then we are overall being irrational because the, the individual experience of the bunny is the foundation of uh, okay. what is justified but or not. How now, did I yeah, go on. But I did, I did take everything of, of all the experiences of the bunny into account in my decision to eat it. 
No, what you've done is you've taken like one. Like we'll get on to whether you you you. you I think it was selling it, wasn't it? Like the the idea was that I uh, you produce the bunnies so that you can sell it so that you can give more bunnies a greater overall good. Oh, okay. Now, now one what we can say is that the like whether the production of individuals to feel good is a good in and of itself, right? Like so. Like whether we like this is the utilitarian. Like if we just ram the population numbers up enough, um, perhaps <laughs> they will come to some sort of you know great society. Even though everyone is having a mediocre time, the slight positive is better <laughs> than the qualitative experience of of the agents. You know, like better to have uh ten like ten thousand people who are living mediocre lives than let's say ten people living like kings. Right, uh, that's the utilitarian goal. Um, yeah. When like that's not necessarily the case, because if I was to say like, OK, what I'm doing is I'm respecting the experiences of individuals and their experience of reality. And what they want is the greatest overall experience individualistically. Then what I actually want is the greater over, overall qualitative experience. Right. Not not uh, quantitative. I mean, experience. that's just the difference between how you measure things. We, that would be too. Like, I mean, I don't know. Like, a, again, it's all utilitarian. It's just the measurements difference. You know, it's just the difference between how you measure. You see, I, I wouldn't say it is utilitarian because it's the consideration of the uh, and and one actually. I will say this: it does seem a bit strange to reject equality. Like you said, like like for example, you don't care about fairness. Well, you do care about fairness no, if you're utilitarian. No, I do care about <laughs> no, no. I do, no. What I was what I was gonna say it was. I was trying to say as I don't care about one individual, one specific individuals. A calculation of fairness like when she said like this is fair like i don't yeah you are just one individual and you're extremely biased because you've been personally experienced you know experienced something here so if somebody says this is my fairness i don't care about that person's notion of what's fair what's fair or not right um i'm looking at the grand scheme of things mm -hmm. um, so what you care about is uh what actually is fair and how we calculate that yeah. So I mean, I only care about fairness because of the, what it means at the end to increasing respect, happiness and reducing suffering. individual individuals' experiences, which is pain and pleasure, right. which we agree yeah. cannot be divorced from from subjectivity. So what we are doing is we're respecting each and every individual. Everyone equates to one. I mean, that's Bentham's kind of original thesis, isn't it? Like everyone equals one. Okay, but how does that translate to the bunny? I still don't understand what I'm. How 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 am I? Not because I'm I, saying that, like, yeah. by by producing a bunny, actively considering that you are going to use that bunny without consideration of its interests to simply create more bunnies. Who I are am considering then... its interests. I am definitely considering its interests. You said you were, well, like, n not entirely. Because my point is, is that if you kill the bunny prematurely, okay. then that but... bunny could have lived a better life. You've used that bunny as a means to an end. In reflect. Yeah, but reflect. and thank and that bunny should be thanking me for all the fucking and eating it managed to do because my because of Could my. Could we make the same person. argument about humans? Yep. So you think if that you, having having uh, no, producing... you have to you have to make everything equal though. Okay, so to to make to be able to make the same argument in humans. Okay, this is why the other vegan person. What, what's his name? Forgot his name. Ask yourself. Ask yourself. Sorry, getting very angry with me. Okay. Uh, because for this to apply to humans, for first of all, um, they okay. So the the humans shouldn't be self-aware, right? Second of all, we shouldn't be. I mean, there's a level of disgust that we have from consuming human meat. That level of disgust is the psychological trauma that is gonna be there. That shouldn't be there. So we have to eliminate the disgust that we have from eating human meat. Uh, another thing, I don't know, is human meat even healthy? It should uh, be well, healthy. Well, one, like you can eliminate the psychological disgust by just saying that, okay, they're getting sold to cannibals who no, actively we... want to eat oh, okay. humans. All right. So, no, uh, yeah. So I'm just saying everything. And, um, every, yeah. I'm just and trying to step by step eliminate. Hold on. I have self... to, before, you, before you let me, because I, this is going to make me sound like a psychopath if you don't let me give you all the conditions. Right? Oh, no. okay. uh, but... Um, you also have to live in a world where people are not traumatized by the idea that we live in a world where we kill humans, chop them up, and sell their food. Okay, so they don't know. No, no. It, it, I mean, they don't know. What do you mean? Like, we, if that's, even if they don't know the specific humans we're doing this to, if we allow. No, if, I mean, they just don't know about it. They don't know what happens. They don't know what happens. 
like it's a secret operation yeah. and we're like what are we doing we're kidnapping human mm-hmm. uns- not self aware human organ harvesting <laughs> <laughs> i mean i mean we i mean we're still we're now allowing that to exist in the world i mean i would be traumatized by knowing that's allowed in this world so are you not letting me know as well let's say nobody that- no nobody knows except for the people who are psychologically capable of uh, what are we doing? Are we finding hu- are we finding like vegetable type humans that are not self aware and they're chopping them up and selling well, their meat? Well, one, I don't see why the self awareness uh, necessarily Wait. matters. Oh, self awareness matters. Humans are self aware, so we're why is self awareness in- inherently valuable. I mean, for you to commit a crime against a person, you have to take away something from them with that they appreciate having. If you're self aware, you appreciate being alive. Okay. And if you so, kill humans, you're taking away that 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 thing that they value. Do you appreciate being alive? Do, yeah. do, do you think that humans appreciate being alive, or do you think they appreciate their experience as well? They're alive. I think that the latter. The, the, the knowledge former. of them. Of, okay, so their self awareness means that the knowledge of them being alive is a it's an experience of itself. Like the fact that they have a future, the fact that they exist, mm-hmm. the fact that. They could feel sympathy for themselves. They could feel sorry for themselves. They could be proud of themselves. All those experiences have value, and you are taking that away from them if you take that, if you kill them, even if you kill them well, humanely. Look, yeah, yeah, okay, but their experiences only, like as you say, like if if, if I it... kill a cat without any, without their self awareness, right? Without them, without any pain, sorry. I have not taken away anything from this cat that it ever knew that it had. The things that I have done, the crimes that I've committed against this cat is one thing. Future pleasure that, you know, the the pet owner that is now going to be traumatized about me killing the cat. Mm -hmm. If the cat had any children, the, the, the children that are now going to be missing their mom, those are the crimes that are committed. But I, I haven't taken anything I, the life that the cat had, if I if you if you cause pain to the cat, you taken away something the cat appreciated having. The cat appreciated not being in pain until you started mm-hmm. torturing the cat. And now the cat, you know, you're taking something away from the cat. The cat really appreciated being not being in pain and now you're giving it pain. The but cat currently appreciates the cat never had appre- the cat had never never had the appreciation of existing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I don't think one. I don't think humans um, appreciate existing in general. Like, take for example, yeah, suicidal I, suicidal people. Um, a lot of them really don't appreciate existing. Is it okay? Right, to kill yeah, them? That, that's why. Yeah, that's why I support death with dignity. If people are suicidal, I think we should help them commit suicide. Well, what if we say that those? Well, why would we do that? If let's say their suicidal thoughts are the result of depression. Which can be cured, well, treated, and then allow them right. to live so better to, lives. We have to evaluate whether it's possible for them to not be so suicidal. We, do we respect their conceptualizations of their future experiences, or do we respect? Well, this the... this is exactly why we don't. So, so even with humans, I agree we don't. Like if somebody is suicidal, but we know that we could make them better and give them a good life, we don't. We don't. We themselves. deny. Huh. We don't yeah, but they want to kill themselves. But I, but if we have, we could deny. If we know that they have chance, we might deny them um, against their better judgment. Well, sorry, against their judgment. Right. The point is against. It's not their better against, judgment. Sorry, sorry yeah. against. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, against sorry. their judgment. But if we if we evaluate and see like somebody is suicidal and they're not going to get better, we might even help them commit suicide, and that's called death with dignity, like in or, or euthanasia. Um. Yeah. Because right. we could have euthanasia where people die in the, because the, like they would rather die sooner than later because of the overall experiences of but, suffering that are later. But again, we, but we, we deny them that if we know that this is not the best option for them. Yeah, because right. we're, what we do is we're, 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 we're understanding. But even with humans, individual. we're not respecting that. But that we're not really respecting their conceptualizations of their own experiences in the right. future. Yeah. What we are respecting is those experiences that they will actually undertake. Right? Yeah. Why don't we do but, that to animals? Well, we're not, we're taking into with the bunny. We're we're considering not just one bunny. We're considering the other but other bunnies as well. Yeah, no, I'm just like like obviously we'll we'll get back to the bunny example. I oh. mean, just in general, when we're considering animals, right. why don't we consider our conceptualizations of the animals' possible experiences? Why do we consider simply their own, their ability to conceive of themselves in the future? Why don't we respect our ability to conceive 
of them in the future. Well, I do. So do. then killing an animal. So then okay. killing an animal painlessly, um, if we are denying it future better experiences, is still harming it. Yeah, but n- um, not if. Well, again, that's why we have to include the other bunnies that are being affected by this as well. No, but the I'm saying like individual, just just in this case, like you'll just just kind of point this out. So in this we case, cannot, the money from we, the bunny will to go kill, from. What my point is is to kill unnecessarily an animal which okay. can live a good life is a moral wrong. Would we agree? But, but, oh, Even if it's incapable of self conceptualization. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that in that vacuum that you created, yes, you're right. Okay. That, in now, that vacuum. But what I'm saying that you have to take the larger picture into account. Okay. Like and if now, you have only let's one take bunny. The larger, the... Let's take the larger. Let's take the bunny example back again. So we agree that killing an animal um, has nothing to do with self-awareness. Then the consideration no, of I the don't... animal. No, no, I, it's it's one of the factors. I didn't say it's the only factor. I'm saying that even if an animal is not self-aware, if I kill it, um, I'm still committing a harm against that animal not because it was like if it was self-aware i would be committing more of a harm against that i would be taking more things away from that animal i mean not necessarily i mean all we're taking is a different psychological experience of the present we're taking more psychological experiences from that bunny right why is more better i mean more pleasure more pleasure that well i mean i could say like for one like psychological experiences can be inherently negative i mean if we look at um experiences of anxiety depression i'm I'm assuming that most people living being that is aware of its existence on average is okay with happy with being alive okay if it's Uh, if the the bunny was suicidal no hold on if the bunny was suicidal that's a different thing but no i'm saying like i'm saying like let's no, but take... i'm saying like okay like here's like what i'm saying is like if i kill a bunny i am taking away future future pleasure that i can conceive the bunny cannot conceive the future pleasure mm-hmm. i can conceive the future pleasure and even though the bunny cannot conceive that it's going to be fucking another bunny a week from now i know that it might so i'm taking that potential away from that bunny okay so yes i am taking away something from the bunny uh, even if it, the bunny doesn't realize that. And that's a crime against the bunny. But, but in humans, if, if you bunny, also gain the hopes the bunny... and dreams and aspirations. Right. Okay, good. Right. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Except all of those things exist as um, experiences of the present um, considering the future. So when yeah. I experience that's the benefit extra... of hope, yeah. um, aspirations, and um, let's say, um, I don't know, whatever anticipation I have for the future, I'm actually experiencing it in the now, yeah? Right, so, right. So, so by the, the, taking, the benefit so for, for, of, of so, that yeah, is experienced so, let me just this now, the audience. so when they die, that isn't um, uh, uh, an additional lost experience, you know, isn't or that? we could, and, and, and even if, we, because like the, they haven't lost anything um, great, like we could say that they've lost a greater complexity of psychological experience, which may or may not um, increase the quality of their lives. So people who die who are suicidal, it might increase, it, it, like you, you mightn't have um, yeah. done them as okay, a disservice so as I'm killing the animal because their psychological just, experience of the were, were I'm just worse. Making an assumption. Yeah, you're right. But I'm just making an assumption that most people are not suicidal. Is that not a fair assumption to make? I, I mean, with our society, I'm actually not sure. Um, <laughs> okay, so <for> maybe, <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry, maybe my calculations are wrong, but I'm just assuming that most people are not suicidal. Um, and I'm assuming that's why with humans, you're committing a greater crime because you're you're taking away more positive emotions away from them. You're not just taking... But then they're also the... taking all those negative ones as well. So what we're talking about is just a variation in psychological experience. We're not necessarily saying it's more valuable or not. It's more valuable dependent upon that psychological experience. Right, right, right. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm more... If, if, like, if... I think killing a human that... Is suicide like helping kill a human that is suicidal is a net positive, and a pig that that has nothing um, that killing it would I don't know whatever uh, killing a pig would be more negative than killing a human that is suicidal. Uh, uh, In fact, killing a human that's suicidal might be a net positive. Of course, and then of course, I'm okay. Yes, well, like that. we could have a pig which has a lower hedonic, like kind of treadmill, which means that its hedonic um, radi- range actually exists at a higher ratio than the, than the psychologically complex human. And then what we would be saying there, if we're being, uh, if we're making ratios, which one was right or wrong to kill, right. 
would be to say that it was actually worse to kill the pig than the human. Okay, yep. Yeah, yeah. And? I don't actually agree with that. And I'll explain why. So yeah. I'm respecting the individual's experiences from which um, uh, the individual themselves uh, and their experiences are but obviously valuable to themselves. Let me just clarify something to people because a lot of people think now I'm okay with killing humans um, over animals. I just want people not to get it because some people might not understand what we're saying and then get away with some conclusions that we're not making. Um, I'm a species, okay? So even if something is a greater crime to an animal than a human, I personally am biased towards the human because I care about them more, even if I acknowledge that there's no inherent rational va position. value, even there's nothing makes a human life more valuable than a pig's life, I'm, I just have that bias, um, which is an emotional bias. I, you know, so I just, I just want to say that I do have a bias, right? So, yeah, that's I mean, I have the, yeah, I mean, I do have that bias among humans as well. Like, I love my wife more than any other person on this earth. I don't I think don't, that's a bias. I don't, I I don't claim that. I don't claim that my wife. As well. I don't. I don't claim that my wife is inherently more valuable than other people. She's just more valuable to me. You know what I mean? So humans, for example, are not inherently. I mean, I do understand that they experience. They have certain emotions that other other animals have, uh, but I mean, I I also uh, and when you kill them, you're taking vet more some other emotions that uh, away from them um, that you're not taking away from animals. But we also might you know that pigs experience pain more than humans or stuff like that. So uh, in that case, even though it's a less variety of experiences, it might be more intense in pigs, right? So mm -hmm. just a variety is not a, is not the Met shouldn't be the metric here, right? But at the end of the day, I care about humans more than I care about pigs. And you might think like, well, that's not rational. I'm like, well, yeah, it's, it's, it is and it's not because it's not because it's just an emotional bias as a human that, I, that my brain has been wired in a way to care about humans more than animals. But it's also rational because you cannot calculate my ethical decision, calculation process without taking my emotions into account. Like there is no way for you to in exclude my emotional preferences into your logical calculation. So I agree. Emotion and logic are not like of contradiction. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but I would also say that you have a, like, for example, in the in regards to your wife, I'd say that like, for example, her being your wife, her being a member of your family in the closest proximity, I'd say that will probably justify it in saying that you have a greater duty to protect your wife over a random stranger, uh, even if your wife has exactly the same value that the experiences of the stranger are not being considered as rash as be as much as the experiences of your wife because rationally we would say that like if everyone protects their wives if everyone protects their families and so on we live in an overall greater society as we, as we spoke about before so you can see that it's even a rational uh, consequence of having but uh, it doesn't equal have value. i don't care that it's right i mean even if you yeah i know you don't me, but i'm just yeah. i'm just making the point <laughs> right, right. Um, but i'm just and, saying and, that and the, this the is, point this is the point of differentiating meta ethics and normative ethics so meta ethics would be to say what what, what is valuable uh, right. uh and oh. normative ethics would be like how do we express that value to the greatest degree okay um, great good so with comes to animals given that humans on most humans are species we can't tell them from you know if you want to talk look at all the consequences uh, what you can do is, is try educate to get them, them to not be speciesist. No, we can't do that. Why what can't you can we do, do that? Huh? Why can't you do that? You can educate people out of racism, can't you? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily, uh, but you can do your best to try. And you would you say there's a moral obligation to uh, argue against the racist I mean, and show why that position's I mean, I don't think that most... Okay, so what I think is that people are not logically do not get logically argued out of racism. They get emotionally manipulated, rightfully so, out of racism. I don't think you so. I, mean? I think I think oh. people can get logically argued out of racism, and I think that's... The only think, time that you could logically... Yeah, I agree. Actually, Take, take right. Benjamin so, Franklin, not Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Edison, I think was the, be no, like, but, but, is but the greatest the time, example. The way you could get logically argued out of racism is if you were log if you were like argued into racism you know no I mean? no no i completely disagree look look at look at thomas edison not thomas edison but he keeps i just said his name oh my god he wrote the deck it was in the declaration of independence thomas Paine. no my god uh, the uh was it he wrote the discourse on equality, was it equality equality of all men 
Oh my God, Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson, right? <laughs> oh yeah, the, bi the Bible uh, cutting. Yeah, yeah. Thomas Jefferson really wanted to justify slavery. Um, he actually hated the fact that he came to the conclusion that slavery was wrong. He wrote about the fact that he's oh, looked yeah. extensively okay. into the well, science yeah, that I'm he was trying to show people. that slaves aren't as valuable, that they're not as considerable, and ultimately had to conclude that You're slavery was unjustified. Great thinkers, the greatest thinkers of our time. Like, yeah, of, but that's just, uh, that's just an expression of, 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 he's just a human yeah. though, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying most people are not like that, okay? Well, that doesn't most mean that, 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 that you shouldn't try to engage that reasoning. Like, they can still I do. Be, no, yeah, no, no, no. Exactly. I'm an activist. Like, That's what I do for a living. You, you make but it... what I do, but what I do, what I realize through my activism, is that the emotional appeal sometimes works much better than logical appeal. Yeah, sometimes it does. Um, most although I'd like, say that emotions, most... like emotional appeals, if they aren't logically justified, are unethical. Like, so if I'm trying to emotionally appeal you to become a racist, for example, I would say that that was a wrong thing to do. I know, I know. But, but, but here's the thing, like from all the emotions, sympathy, like just like logic could most of the time is a force for good. I mean, logic could be used for evil as well. Right. But most of the time, more logical societies are better off. Right. Not all emotions are created equally. That's why I think like appeal to emotion, if it's appeal to sympathy, it, it, I mean, I realize that it's a, it's not it's it's not it's logical fallacy to appeal to people's emotion, but you're not trying to be logical here. I think even though appeal to appealing to people's sympathy sometimes could get you a bad result, but on average, it will get you better results, just like logic, right? So uh, I'm not necessarily okay. because you can have people who become emotionally right. attached, for example, to so uh, an like you know, like um, let's say people get emotionally attached to like computer uh, software um, and they're willing then to place let's say a robot uh, and lacking experience they have an empathetic right. experience to that robot that's made to look anthropocentric that's made to behave and act like a human said, an average, virtual an average more sympathy like an average more sympathy makes the world a better place no, I, 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 don't, I don't think that necessarily necessarily equates I think it, it can make a bit, world a better place um I didn't that say necessarily. I was saying it high it makes it more likely. Okay. Like, I mean, logic. You could say that about logic as well. Like Lo I think, I think logic, if uh, if applied correctly, would always make the world a better place. Mm, okay. Here's here's a here's a, a hypothetical for you. Let's say that the, we take this world and change it in two different ways, and you tell me which one is going to be a better world. Okay. We have mm. this world, and we make everybody in this world a, a lot more logical mm -hmm. but a lot less sympathetic to each other than they are right now okay that's okay. one scenario that's world a and now world b we take the same world we make everybody a lot less logical but a lot more sympathetic and mm -hmm. that would be world b which one of these worlds do you think is going to be a better world well they oh i think it's going to be world b no, no. You see, we're using not to say world A. It's like if you take, if you take, like for example, like all perceptual data being equal, so they're able to understand each other uh, capably. Because there is something to be said about empathy and social skills and the ability to perceive another's interests, which is, you know, the ability to even behave logically anyway might be um, somewhat emotionally driven in that respect. Like the ability to actually engage with one another, uh, to understand one another's uh, actual. Uh, value, right? So if we were to say that they still had knowledge of that value, right? Like they still had that 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 data, and they would act purely rationally, which is to say that they were to say, um, "I will do the right thing at all times," and by doing the right thing, I know I'm benefiting myself, and by benefiting myself, I'm also benefiting others. And so what we consider now, when we Good. when we do the right thing, you're going to hit a lot the... of prisoner dilemma situations. Hmm? The prisoners that you're going to have a lot of situations where people are going to hit the prisoners dilemma and they're going to fuck everybody around them because it's going to be in their best interest. I think no, people no, are see, going to be I very. Don't think that you, I don't think you, you see that this is the whole point. I think egoism breaks down into um, altruism, quote unquote, in the mutual ex, mutual cooperation. We epistemologically rely upon universals, as I said before, to come to our I don't think, conclusions I don't about think, our own interests. I don't think that's what mo motivates people, right? Even in the world that we live today. I don't necessarily it's... think that this is what motivates everyone. I mean, you, you give us the hypothetical of world A and world B. Yeah, but, but uh, I'm just saying that... I, okay, so let's go to world as it is right now. I think 
because we started with this world. I mean, most people are not thinking like... Most people, when they act ethically, they're just reacting to certain emotions that they want to satisfy. Are they even acting right. ethically then? Like, like, come yeah. on, man. Like, nah, nah. Like, like if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're doing ethics and what your ethics is is an expression of your emotional states, then what you're actually doing is not ethics. You're just Wait, expressing so you're your own co- desires. You, you're not yeah. thinking. How yeah, could yeah. you not ethics do- isn't Ethics isn't... Um, is the same as any other institution. It exists you, with an Why would you even care application. about ethics if you didn't have that drive? Well, to care about others, yeah, absolutely would. Yeah, but okay. So, for, so you are you telling me that if you like you're in a plane and you see this really old lady trying to put her luggage up and she just can't and her arms are so weak and you and you just you're not you just feel like oh my god I need to help her right you just and you help her, and she's like, "Oh, thank you so much," uh, and you just feel good about that, and you just did that because of the. If first you did of it purely all, to feel good, like then that's not ethics. <laughs> no. What the hell? Like, so why do you do good things then? Uh, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I do as well feel those emotions and those emotional states, but and they do um, perhaps. Then what is? Okay, aid so tell me if my it's reasoning, not for that desire. But, for what is it for then? What's like, alternative? I, would, I would say that it's overall for the for the greatest for the greatest good in that and respect. You, and and so you want that, right? So uh, yeah, but I mean, like all desire is like all ethics is based but on it desire. Is, in, again, in, but at the end, you are satisfying your desire. At the end of the but day, like, you're yeah. So- there's a difference between desire, as in desire, um, like irrational, un, irrational, so undetermined desire, first order, and second order desire which is rationally deduced as being right or wrong so like Wait, when I go, desire I, why what makes your desire more rational than my desire you you for some reason care about the greatest good i mean i do too but i'm just saying at the end it's of not day, about because the, the consequences is not simply a moment of self gratification it's the overall consideration of the woman and her experiences as being rationally equal to my own now you say like don't get me wrong that, i think that can like empathy that can, was also so a momentary it, like that would also be a momentary, like a momentary uh, gratification of a desire. Like you're just like, even if you went through, like, let's say you went like, okay, I need to help this woman because what? Like, how would that thinking process go? Let's let's hear it. Because she's struggling and she and, needs help. And why do you care about that? Because I care about her. Why? Okay, wait. So you're 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 just doing what I'm doing. So you just well, care. Why do I care so, about her? Because, why do you care about her? Well, like. So if you're asking, like, do I care? Why do you care about her? Like, of course, is like, of course, is like, d- desire is at the heart. Like, don't get me, I'm not divorcing desire from it. I'm doing okay. the exact opposite. I'm just, okay, like, so I'm just trying the to difference see the difference. Is, there's a difference between acting selfish, self, self, selfish, selfishly, okay. and then and rationally to consider both of us. So if I'm doing something good purely We're because it selfish. will make me feel good, and I don't care about that woman, I'm not doing ethics. But right. what's the alternative? That's that's what's the alternative? Like, give me an example. Let's say you're helping. The alternative this is to consider that woman's experiences, even if it causes me suffering. Let's say I really don't want to. That's pick what that you, bag That's what I. That's the same thing. Okay. No, so, because no. Let's say you feel good. You're saying you do it to feel good afterwards. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you do it because okay. you've determined it is justified. Okay. So you determine it's justified, and you want to do the just thing, right? Yeah. Okay. So. What does it mean for you to want to do the just thing? That means you des- you get the desire, desire to do I the agree. just thing. So okay. what it means what it means if you do something that you desire, that means you're gonna get some gratification from doing it. That means you're gonna get the momentary gratification from doing something that you desire. You were being fuck you're being selfish. Like, like, How is that not selfish? Like, no, it's not necessarily selfish. Like like the, the like when like for example, when the individual finds himself in the objective, we could say like an egoist finds themselves in ethics as doing the right thing is in their own in their own interests. But in being ethical, they can they gain an appreciation for the other. I'd say that this is when, like, for example, McIntyre talks about this when he says uh, the internal goods of a, of a practice, of human practice. And I'd say one of those things is to consider other individuals and their but value. But the appreciation of the other person is coming through a desire that you have for seeing them happy or, or see, seeing them happy or doing the just thing. It's all, it, it all comes down to your personal desire. How is it not? 
No, and if I'm it, not saying if it, I'm not saying desire is not being okay, considered. Okay, what I'm okay, differentiating okay. So is between admitting, rational desire, like rational, like admitting, second order desires and first order desires. Ethics is a then, second but, order process. Okay. Okay, first like, of all, I don't know the difference yet, but I will. So, but before so, we go uh, to the, before, before 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 we go to the difference, if it's desire, whether it's first degree or second degree, how is it not selfish if it's just satisfying your your desire? Well, I mean, okay, like let's define what selfish is first, shall we? So, okay. is it done purely for self gratification? I don't know what other. That's what I would this. say. Selfish was selfish was for purely okay, how, for self gratification. Okay, so, okay, let's say not purely. What's the other things other than self gratification? What uh, well, what's like, the other uh, other? mutual gratification? But mutual gratification, you mean that you're taking the other person's gratification into account, right? Yes. So, how's you caring about the other person's gratification come into equation? The the way it does is that the other person's gratification is. Making you happy, right? Like, well, if, it, I, it, I mean, like, I mean, it might the make us actually way, really the unhappy. Way, I might, the only way I might that want you... to help someone, even like I even said, I might want someone who I hate to do well, like pedophiles, rapists, whatever. I might not want them to. I might want them to suffer, but then I might deny myself the gratification of wanting them to suffer because it is wrong. Like, right. that's and the, you want uh, to be right. Yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm not so denying the the the, 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 the purport, I know, I know the first order desire. desire. Like, like I'm not denying that all okay. desire is not like uh, is... in relation to like like for example, second order desires are based off first order desires. I even made that point earlier. What okay, I'm saying is that ethics so is, is rational. What you described anything... was irrational. It was emotional. It wasn't in conclusion to what is desire... great, bringing the overall okay. benefit of individuals, mutual gratification. All desire, it was done purely. First... For self gratification, it was done purely okay, for momentary self gratification. Not even it's act- not even rational egoism. It's just it's irrational egoism. Okay, there. Do you agree that whether it's first degree or second degree, it all comes down to desire? All yes, of all okay. of it. Yeah, absolutely. It. So if it all comes down to desire, your desire. Not desire. Huh? You see, your the thing is, is that like because cause second if, say, like, degree. For the understanding care, of the, the point I'm no, making is that for, the understanding the, of individual desires, like egoism, is inherently no, flawed because of the issues with private say, language. It's impossible to conceptualize. A conceptualize. When you say second degree desire, you're talking about other people's desires as well that you're taking that that into account as well, right? That's what you yeah. mean by second degree desire. But okay, but well, no, well, I mean it's it's also taken in consideration of you. Uh, right. In general, so, so like the point is, it's taken into consideration desire simpliciter, which is the application of the concept of desire. Okay. Like if you look at how we divest the world, it's not individualistic, it's not private. Like what I actually do when I when I um, give names to objects, nouns, for example, is I differentiate those objects as determinate objects that are different from one another. I apply universals such as table, chair, whatever. These universal applicable concepts actually relate experientially to my experiences of various objects throughout my life okay. and also to another experience, another person's experienced objects throughout their life. And then it is held constant in a grammatical system within language, which is external to my rationality so that I may refer to it to see if I'm using the concept as correct or not. If I'm not using it as correctly, I might say I was mistaken. That's not a chair. That's a stool. And and th- I can only do that because it's objective from my interpretation of that concept. Okay, okay. The exact but, same thing applies to um, egoism and the ability to conceptualize right, but itself. It all so, comes even, but if even in the case of the second degree desire, the only way that you could care about other people's desire is if their desires matters to you. So it will come down. There, you wanting their desires to matter. It comes down to the, the second degree desire will come down gets translated to the first degree desire at the end. Like my, my, my like like the, my no my point is is that even the, con- the the consideration of an individual in and of themselves is impossible without the assistance of another individual who gives purport to those experiences. Um, so, for example, yep. I can only say desire because it exists in a common domain from which we are, we both identify okay. and give va- and give value to. Like that, that is the only Let reason me, I can apply it to myself. But, but the for the place. people, for my audience, maybe that might not understand what we're talking about. Uh, just the example I usually give, and I know I, I want to move on after this because I, um, I think we're just talking about the same thing in two different ways. Maybe we're not. I don't know. But let's say, for example, you're torturing a soldier to give a to tell us where his friends are hiding so we could go kill his friends, and he dies under torture and he doesn't give away where his friends are. I'm like, oh my god, that was a very selfless act. 
uh, I'm like, no, that was a very selfish act because the only thing that the soldier did was to, took two pains into account, the pain of the torture and the pain of being responsible for giving away where his friends are. And he decided that the, to- the pain of the torture was less than the torture of him being responsible for giving away his, fr- uh, his friends. So he, he chose the lesser of the two pains. So even the most selfless acts ever could be translated. If you look at them, it's all selfish, right? Zee, everything I, we do is selfish. I, I disagree. I'd say that on the inverse, I'd say that everything we do is not selfish inherently because to, do, to, be, to be purely selfish is logically impossible. Um, it actually forces us to be irrational. And that's my point. Like we can be selfish if we choose to be irrational. Um, I don't think we can. Okay, the way I'm looking at it, I don't know. Maybe I'm not understanding you, but I don't think it's possible for us not to be selfish. Yeah. Maybe I, I, I don't. don't understand. Like we can we can disagree yeah. on that. Like yeah, um, yeah. Um, yeah. although I think it's vitally important because I think that my position would be that ethics is the only way to be logically consistent, logically consistently um, even value ourselves. But in doing so, we are only capable of valuing each other. Like to value each other is the only way that we are capable of valuing ourselves conceptually. That's, that's essentially what I'm, that's what the, the point of ethics, which is why virtue and happiness are one and the same for the Greeks, which is like human flourishing. Um, okay. No, let's, like, let's, I, I wanted, I want us to get to veganism though. Like yeah, we haven't, yeah, yeah. We, like we talked, yeah. um, the reason okay. that like this kind of matters, I mean, you talk about like the, 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 the bunny and so on like that, I would say that the individual, like the bunny themselves matters. And like, so for example, when you produce that bunny, uh, if you aren't considering them as having a quality of experience from which you have a responsibility towards, um, and you deny that to produce more quality of experiences, then your, your, um, your reasoning is contradictory. You are rejecting their subjectivity simply uh, in, in, on a particular level to respect subjectivity on a universal level. And there's no, there's no uh, like, uh, without cause, there was no need to do this. Uh, and so you've actually created an overall greater uh, uh, flaw in your, in your, in your logic. Um, we can move wait, on to animal wait, agriculture now though, if you'd like. Wait, and wait, are, do you consider yourself a species? Um, mm, no, probably not. No? Okay. Um, I, I would say that like, um, like I, I think to be honest, um, like I don't value, um, I don't really differentiate between the value of animals in general. I'd say that the I have greater overall responsibility, care. like my dog, for example, than a random pig, um, or or like just as I have a greater responsibility, my girlfriend and my mom, than to a random stranger in the street. But I think that's logically justified. What about anyway. a random human compared to a random pig? Um, I'd say that um, I have equal responsibility to. To both, except I would say that because I live in a human society, uh, which has rules and regulations on how we treat humans, uh, I'd say institutionally I have a greater responsibility towards that human. Wait, if you respect rules and regulations so much, then why do we? Then do you respect the rules and regulations that do, has not made killing of animals illegal? Well, the reason what, what I'll be saying is that like we've come to the point in which these rules and regulations when which consider human rights and then animal rights and, you know, the rationalities have developed over time to show that they are internally in contradiction. That, and this is why I would say that welfareism, which is, I think, the position of most people in today's society, uh, institutionally embedded as well, like even in the even in the products we buy, you know, free range, organic, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it shows itself to be in contradiction. It ultim- ultimately cares about the welfare of the animal, well, as right the now, welfare of the animal. As, so the ethic, well, ethical until, constitutions are in contradiction. Okay, but until we can change the rules, you're okay with people following the rules as, as it is? Um, I would say that, like, as we change the rules, I think that people should, you know, follow welfareism to its rational end, and they'll be advocating for us to change the rules. Okay, but until you're successful, you're okay with the rules is the way they. You mean like, like I you... wouldn't ban, like I would not enforce a ban on animal products until the majority of the individuals in our society agree that eating animal products is wrong. Yeah. Maybe, because I would yeah. be forcing moral progression, which is impossible. Okay. Yeah. So is that your position? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's move on to where did you want to move on to? Um, well, we can talk about animal agriculture now. Um, okay. you, you wouldn't be interested in having like a two-minute break just to go to the bathroom, would you? Uh, no, no, let's do that actually. But yeah. I'm not going to stop recording. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, two, two minutes. Okay, okay.
So this is going a lot better than my last. I mean, by better, I mean more friendly than the last argument. I'm here to entertain people while we wait. I mean, I don't know what to say right now. By the way, if you're a vegan and you're watching this, please don't get angry with me, okay? I'm really trying my best. I am honestly trying to be... I mean, if I'm wrong, I'm, it's not like I'm doing it intentionally. Actually, you might think like that it's so obvious that why you should be vegan, but we, but it's just our preference for being able to eat meat that makes us like argue these positions and that we're not being honest. So if you think that about me, then you might think like I'm evil or something. I mean, I am evil, but hey. I'm trying to entertain people while we wait. Uh, you muted. Oh, wait. Say something? Hello? Oh, you're, you're good. You're good. Can you hear It's cutting in and out. Say something again. Uh, hello? Oh, good, good. All right. Okay, sweet. Um, yeah, so... I guess like, we should probably talk about animal agriculture at some point and not just metaethics. And uh, I, you know, I keep doing right. this. I'm terrible for metaethics. I'm actually writing a PhD, you see, on the metaethics of veganism. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, like, it's hard it kind to of follow. Always get... I use like very advanced terminology, so it's hard to follow sometimes. Um, Maybe you so, talk to smarter uh, people than me. Usually... Any... Uh, not well. I mean, not, not. I mean, like, I think you've. you've seem like a really intelligent guy i don't i don't think there's it's not that it's just i guess it's esoteric words and, and terminology i just don't realize i'm using it sometimes um <laughs> it just it just comes out you know you know what i mean like when you get like in habits and stuff like that um, and and obviously if there's anything that you want to express like just that as that's known i'll do my best to to express it in like ordinary language and i think that's how philosophy should be done for the most part anyway like in ordinary language and it's right. the greater overall benefit of the population um because being rational ultimately means being right and ethical and like overall that means that we're going to do the right thing right so like so essentially i think that it's a content like an ethical travesty that uh, animals are being executed on a day-to-day -day basis uh for meat dairy and eggs right would you disagree with that i would say it's an atrocity that they're being tortured and they are on oh. daily basis yes okay what not, if they... not killed if they, but the fact that they're being tortured is right the way, the way well, they're being treated yeah. I would say that they are part and parcel of the same overall um, continued um, it, um, uh, like uh, what's the word I'm looking for like um, continued exploitation and uh, in consideration of their interests that because we can see animals as um, having less um, value than humans we give them uh, we treat them unequally we, we say that they give their it's okay to torture them that it's okay to kill them um, I would say that in both cases that is wrong and faulty reasoning and that there is no reason to, to consider humans as having more moral weight than animals. I uh, mean, more I don't think, I would, I would, again, if we lived in a world where humans, I don't think, I mean, I'm okay with killing them without pain, even if they were morally, even if they are morally. But why? Well, I mean, that's because we what we talked about. Like, I think if humans were also in a position where they were not self-aware, and if humans were not disgusted by eating other human meat, and also if we lived in a world where humans were not psychologically traumatized by the knowledge of being living in a society where we kill hum some humans and chop them up and eat them, um, and also if the humans that we we're killing were not didn't have anybody that um, would miss them or be, you know, be be emotionally be sad about not them them not being alive. For example, yeah, I would, then in that world, which is not at all the world we live in, then it would be okay to t um, identify the humans that are not self-aware and be like, okay, you could be, you know, if we don't have much li to live, much longer to live, then you could be meat for the rest of us. Well, I mean, that's about, disgusting, uh... but in that that's disgusting and traumatic. But the hypothetical that we came up with, it wouldn't be disgusting. Or well, what if what I mean, like, let's say remove the disgust by making an organ harvest and still kills them. No, I mean, um, no, because it's that's all of that is still traumatic. You, you could tell you could try to tell me like other people wouldn't know. But by by you telling me this, you're letting me know. 
And yeah, I'm okay. traumatic. <laughs> and okay. I'm tra- well, that, that, I would have a I psychological know. trauma. Well, let's say, it. let's say it's organ harvesting. Let's have you ever seen the island? Uh, Ewan McGregor. Uh, I think so. I think he, I saw it, but it was so lame that it didn't. Oh, I love the island. Anyway. Wait, which the, one? Um, is, wait, wait. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, okay. Uh, I, the island uh, is basically... Oh, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, essentially clones um, are used for organ harvesting, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah. Now, yeah, are no, we that's being good. immoral yeah. in not considering good. those clones? Um, I don't remember the plots. So Can let's say, like, the clones, like, are, like, raised in a facility... Um, but you know, let's say that this facility is actually giving them an overall positive life, um, right. right? Which I think it is for the most part. Like, um, and at the end, of, they get to like a certain age, and then they are yep. killed. Um, but they're surgically killed, so they're made unconscious, uh, and the organs removed. Yeah, I would be fine with that in that world. Like, if you told me, like, hey, Armin, you're gonna, we, the only reason why you're alive is because you know we we made you, and by age thirty. We're going to chop you up and serve you as meat to other people. Um, and the only reason why you get to experience this life right now is because we get to do that to you. I'm like, okay, you fair would, enough. You wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily, like, I don't know, fight back, try to get out. I mean, I would, but I would be appreciative of the fact that the, whatever industry that made me exist, even though if I tried to fight back. You know what I mean? I would be like... I'm glad that that industry like brings. Well, would you blood. say like, when you are fighting back, would you be like you are doing something wrong in killing no, me? No, I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have any arguments against. So you just, you'd be like, you're doing the right thing. I'm just emotionally tied into survival. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should kill me, but I don't want to die. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that, that is <laughs> yes i would but again that would be in a hyp- very hypothetical situation we don't live in that world we live in a world that if we knew like they're doing this to some people on this on an island we would be like oh what the fuck and animals don't live in that world animals don't live in a world where they like if you take away a cow and kill them in a humane way the other cows are not like not gonna be like what the fuck happened to Kevin, like we mentioned, right? Yeah, yeah. they're not but gonna I mean, be like the point. They're is, not gonna I write about it in newspapers and like, they like, and do cows go? Do cows? Like, okay, you the know what the name? The, 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 hold on, let me just tell this to, uh, to ideas. Like you know how the uh, other vegans say like name the trait. Here's the trait. Do animals go and think about what is my purpose in life? Why are they feeding me, me here? What is my? What is my? You know. What is my significance? They don't think about this shit, do they? Right? I mean, that is the difference between cows and pigs. Pigs are very smart. They don't think about this stuff. But if you were raised in an island just to be eaten as a human, you might have an existential crisis at some point, right? If you knew mm-hmm. that, right? You would be like, fucking hell, like, am I just meat to these people? Like, you might, that's the psychological trauma that the cows and the pigs and the chickens would never go through. Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. So there's a greater form of psychological suffering and told that you perhaps are going to die one day and like all of that stuff, the existential crisis of it all. Right. So but we I have mean, to eliminate all of that for this to be equivalent. Well, not, well, I mean, not necessarily, because we could say that the overall human experience being diminished um, uh, mightn't um, equate to the overall experience of an animal's like phenomenological experience of pain and pleasure. So, for example, take um, uh, a human, have you, you know, stoicism and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah, so Wait, like stoicism, about- like yeah. philosophy, like yeah, like so like humans in like um like Stoics argue that you can be happy even though you're suffering because you're able to oh, psychologically yep. distance yourself from the pleasure, from the pain rather, and yeah, and right. induce like a pleasurable, a more pleasurable state. Um, very similar, like grit your teeth and bear it and think about something happy, right? Like kind of philosophy. But that's bullshit, isn't it? Well, no. Uh, I think it actually does modify your experiences. Like you can modify your experience by what you uh, like. You you actively make yourself aware of. Yeah, if but you think of, if degree. you think about like a good way, I think the, the, if if you think about your pain, and that's all you can think about, you're going to be suffering a lot more than if you just like it's going to be over soon and you're able to soothe yourself. Yeah, but but in a you month. can change your experiences to some degree, but not. I mean, if I'm hungry. How much thinking can I do? To yeah, you can't think yourself out of. I agree. I agree. Like there is only so, maybe so so much. But then you know, I don't know. Like some people manage to gain like quite a lot of psychological control over their their, their experiences. I mean, like you know, you've got them some. monks who are able to sit set themselves on fire and stuff. Um, I don't trust what the monks say sometimes. Anyway, uh, I know. I know. Monks. I agree. But like, <laughs> the, but the, the the point is, I think that they do have a lot more. Uh, I think that humans can become a lot more tolerable to pain through conditioning. Right. Even. Right. Um, and the like, I mean, is- military do that all the time. 
<laughs> like, um, okay. Um, but... And so a human can actually modify their experiences to perhaps have a greater overall experience because of that complex psychological experience. Um, as in, like, uh, they minimize their suffering, right? Uh, well, they, animal, seem, they, they seem to be. They seem to suck at doing that, though. Most some humans do. Some humans are really great at it. Depends upon the ideology most that they're them, in. I mean, most people seem to be miserable, no matter how much shit you throw at them. Like, you might, when you win the lottery, you're just happy for six months until you you get used to yeah, it. Yeah, that, that might be an issue with hedonism. I think stoicism doesn't run into that. Um, no. But the 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 point is the point I'm trying to make is that they're able to mitigate like perhaps some of the suffering of their experiences, like the pleasure. So, for example, if we were to say that we were killing uh, like our crowd, like uh, even like um, the the conditions of the animal agriculture. Um, Humans, for example, are able to adapt to um, living in um, um, are able to adapt to living in larger groups easier than chickens. Chickens can only adapt to about I think it's 100, 150 chickens max. Humans can adapt much easier because of our ability to communicate, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's one aspect in which crowding, overcrowding, might be more painful for a chicken than a human anyway. So you're saying that, like, for example, it's worse because of uh, a human's ability to be self-aware or like that psychological complexity. Not necessarily. It may be better because their ability to adapt. No, to I, that I agree. I agree. To... We should, we should, the overcrowding should be legal. Yeah. But like, the, 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 like even not, not just that, like the, the, the point I'm seeing is that like self-awareness itself, uh, it doesn't necessarily like, like it doesn't necessarily give um, more psychological value, like more uh, experiential value to um, the individual uh, n like not experiencing certain things or having more talking, value. I don't, I'm not agreeing about the value of the individual. I'm just talking about the value of the pain and the pleasures, right? No, exactly. So they're having less pain and pleasure. So their experiences right. are of less purport. Like right. I can do more to a but human. If, but, 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 if, but I'm just say, saying like, if you could show me that the pig experience was more pain than a human, then I care about the pig's pain more than the right, human. That's great. So then why do we, so why, like, you know, when you talk about like self-awareness, like, why is that in any way valuable? Like, that is valuable. What, That's an experience that animals don't go through. So it should be added to our calculation. Yeah, but like, like when you but, say that, like, for things to be equal, we would need pigs to be, like, or humans in the same no, scenario so, to because, not be okay. self-aware. So, for why? example, what I'm saying, what, what I'm saying is that a, a pig, I care about the pig's pain more than the human's pain. I mean, I don't, but I, if I was, if I was not a species, I would. Um, because the pig could experience more pain, but if I could kill the pig without any pain, then the fact that the pig could experience more pain than a human becomes irrelevant. So the, same with a human then, though. Like, if you were to do the nope. exact same to a human, then it would... Like, yeah, but a human is self-aware, and I'm taking away more... Like, when I kill a human, I'm taking away more than just their appreciation from not being in pain. I'm taking so what away... Are take, what are you taking from them? Taking away their appreciation of being alive. Okay, so they appreciate being alive until they're dead, in which case they don't appreciate being alive. Yeah, so I, that, took, all you're doing I took is, that away from I took so that away like, from them. But what if they really do not appreciate being alive and you're taking then, away the that, negative? Then that, that wouldn't be an extra cost, but for most humans it is. So for most people it is. So self -awareness, you're talking about just, you, see, you see the trait self-awareness, yet really right. what you're talking about is the, the well-being okay, of the individual. So that, that yeah. is essentially still grounded in their experience of the yeah, of course. Yeah, I agree, I agree so with that. So self-awareness yeah. is invaluable. Okay. Self-awareness, we'll say. No, I yeah, but I, but self-awareness is not inherently valuable because it wouldn't apply to a su suicidal person, for example. So or, it's basically, and, self and, and even self-awareness itself is it's it's only valuable in ref in respect to the experiential. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's why I care about self-awareness is because of those other things that it results. But, but at in, the end of the day, I care about those other things. You're right. Yeah. So rea right. in reality, all we're, all we're considering is the experience of the individual in in moment by moment experiences of reality. That's what, I, yeah, that's why I was, uh, that's why, that's the only reason self-awareness came So self-awareness doesn't modify, like in terms of, unless there is a psychological in, di disposition yep. towards increased suffering, which you'd have to be able to show in all cases, which is not necessarily yeah. the case. Self-awareness is, has no purport of whether we should or should not kill humans uh, versus animals. Not directly. Only if you, I, I, I mean, if you're asking me if you're the only thing you care about is suffering. So when you said self-awareness was yes. the trait, so when you like, because I, I mean, I don't, I don't like name the trait, but when you say self-awareness is the trait, what I'm assuming you're saying is that self-awareness is the morally relevant feature, which allows us to differentiate between humans and animals in terms of killing them. Which, that would that be a more wrong. accurate way of describing it. So would you say that would be wrong and self-awareness isn't the trait? I mean, you're just being more, I mean, it. 
I mean, when they ask you to name the trait, you're they're asking you to name traits that leads into which allows the justify. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a fan of this argument. But what the hell? Why okay, not? Okay, so right. <laughs> no, but, 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 but like I mean, us to get somewhere. The, the tra- when I mean, if but when they're asking you to name the trait, they're not. I, I'm. I thought what they meant is like what eventually leads for me to, uh, in my calculations of suffering, in pain and pleasure. Right. I, I didn't. I didn't think today. I didn't think they are asking me if they I care about anything other than pain and pleasure. If that's what they were asking, they're like, oh, no, I don't. The only thing I care about is pain and pleasure. But I thought the question is, like, is there, are, is there a trait that makes the calculation for most, the calculation of pain and pleasure for humans, for most humans, different than animals? Then I would be like, oh, yeah, self-awareness, for example, is one of them. Right. Right. Okay. But, fair enough. But no. But at the end of the day, I only care that about the. Then, that doesn't then yeah. justify the treatment of one different to another, does it? Treatment of what? In like, so for example, self-awareness itself would not justify not, treating one animal as different to another. Not by itself. Not, not by, by itself. itself. Okay. We agree. That's great. Mm-hmm. Um. In which case, um. Overall, what you have to now show in terms of like your consumption of animals is that your consumption of animals creates an overall benefit to society or benefit in general towards the pain and pleasure ratio uh, than, than non-consumption of animals. And also, I would then go, I'd go so far to say, is this includes the continued um, conception of those beings, their potential to uh, uh, have a good life and not after the point that they've been consumed. So for example, we could choose not to consume the pigs that are in animal agriculture, respect their ex- experiences, and they go on to live uh, better well, lives. Typically, I don't or have better to yet, that. Or better yet, we could go and uh, not birth them in the first place, and they'll have all the negative experiences that they're going to have. So in terms of like the vegan so position, which is an abolitionist yeah. one, um, why shouldn't we uh, simply not birth these pigs to consume? And by doing by boycotting the industries, we promote that, you know. Well, there's two assumptions being made here. One is the assumption that we know what the pigs want and we know that they rather not li- ever live compared to the life that they have. Okay, I'm not saying maybe they do, maybe they don't, but I'm, I, I don't think you know, right? Well, I mean, if I, you ask I think, me... I think I can make a rational uh, position from I'm, that. So I think for, for one, like, look at the experiences of pigs um, in terms of what the, the lives they live. For, for example, many of them are drawn, uh, drove nearly to an, a, a psychological state of despair without actually eating each other, uh, which is an expression of uh, severe anxiety in pigs. You've got um, pigs who are severely injured, beaten, tortured, which you agree is wrong. Um, In terms of even, let's say, a free-range organic pig, which goes on to live its day-to-day life, why then would we say, like, you know, we can have this pig um, only if we eat it? Okay, but can I make, well, with regards to the first point, if it was, I'm I'm not saying I know what the pigs want, right? But if you ask me what I would prefer between that life and never existing, I would pick that life. Right. Okay. Okay. But I'm not saying this is what the pigs want, but I just know that that would, that's what I would want. I would rather live. even be a psychological bias towards, uh, towards life. Right. Right. So by, by getting rid of the meat industry, you you might be taking away something from them that they would have preferred. I'm not saying you are, but, you but I don't have. care about that preferences. I care about their interests. What actually brings them the overall experiences. And so do you, because you said what you care about is pain and pleasure. Yeah, but maybe that's maybe experiencing some life over experiencing not no life is better for them. I don't know. I would so, be better for me. Well, how, why would you think it'd be better? I mean, I'd rather experience something than nothing. That's a preference. I, and, but like, as in, like, you wouldn't have like, for example, that preference would not exist if you had never been born for one. So what will actually like? It's, yeah, it's but very that would be a compare. crime against. That would be a crime against me as much as it would be like murder. If you go back in time and make it so that I was never born, you technically murdered me. Well, um, I mean, this is that's a semantic issue. That's a hell of a semantic but, issue. Um, but, but 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 that's one. But the second assumption is that the so that's one thing. But we could address that. But another thing would be. I don't even if that was not the case, I wouldn't have to show that because if I admit that I am being okay, so here's the thing. 
I could admit that it's morally, I would be in a higher moral position, for example, to not eat meat mm -hmm. and still eat meat. And you might be like, huh? You could be inconsistent. You could be wrong. You'd be doing yeah. the wrong thing. Yeah. No, I could, wouldn't yeah. be doing it. Okay. So, and then you were like, why are you doing it? And like, because my, I'm not highly motivated to take an action against that immoral thing. And you were like, okay, so that's, but that's what we, I do. I do it on so many other levels. Right. And the example I give is, for example, I have the air conditioner on right now. Right. And I could turn the air conditioner off and use the money that I was paying for my electricity bill to, you know, I think 50, I think the money that I pay for this, it could save five children from starvation for a year. And I could do that. Right. So every, t the fact that I, every month I could do that with that money. Right. I can't even count the number of children I could save with starvation. But every time I turning this on, I'm actively deciding that my comfort my comfort here right now is more important than every single one of those children that are dying from starvation. I'm actively making that decision, right? It, it's morally equivalent to having children delivered in front of my house every day and me taking a knife and sacrificing them. Oh my God, no, it's not. For, um, well, it's morally I'm equivalent to, 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 to keep my air conditioner running. It would be, it's morally equivalent, right? Um, I mean, so, like, like if we put them outside, like, I mean, morally equivalent to, you know, not giving starving children in the street um, outside money, maybe. But even you know, then, no, because you, you know how easy it is for me to go use my PayPal account right now to like, even if I donated like two thousand dollars every month to to to, to uh, starving children. The fact that I'm not doing an extra spare fifty dollars that I have is me actively making the decision that something else is more important. And it's so like, no, if it's actually easier for me to help children far away right now than the children that are close to me, because the children that are close to me are in the street and I have to actually get out. I have to go in the heat. I mean, you could sun. just donate to a local charity. <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm just saying for me to donate some, for me to actually make the difference where it matters the most, I just have to go online and it just takes a few clicks. Yeah. So it's actually very convenient for me. It's yeah. very easy for me but to do that. But in terms of, like, but one, I would say that, like, I, I think that um, the expression, as I say, the normative institutions of our society give us our, our duties. And I think that we do have a duty to donate a charity. How much we donate a charity, I don't think is like, the, I don't take, I don't agree with Singer and say that donate until um, you're absolutely, you know, just above the poverty line, essentially. I don't care. No, I don't care about uh, what Singer's saying. Uh, but I'm saying but, but is Singer that is how... Singer making the point that he's a utilitarian and that's the rational conclusion. Um, and you're, like, how you're is it not effectively make? How how is it that when I am turning on my air conditioner for me to be a little bit more comfortable right now? How is that not me deciding that my comfort is more important than those child serving children? How is it not the same thing? Well, I'm not saying that. Yeah, like for example, that like, you're not. But I'm 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 saying that like your level, your duty towards those starving children versus your duty towards yourself are, duty. are in a I don't understand duty and stuff. Like I don't know how that your obligation to your own comfort, like to live there a life no of objection. This is all just preferences. Uh, what I, obligation? I, I have I, zero obligation. No, absolutely wrong. Of course, you have an obligation. And I, I, for example, like the for the for the fact that you have a preference in the first place is perhaps one of the I have greatest preference. evidence that you do have an obligation because like the fact that you will suffer if you um if you uh you know get set on fire um shows that you already have a consideration of your own interests I don't know, I don't to know not what be you set mean on fire obligation who comes up with these things these are just made up stuff my feelings towards su the suffering of others that's a real thing that i experience Okay, the obligations like your are just... your feelings are not like an obligation is something in which you did not do it. You would be wrong for not doing it. So you're you're by wait. as in logically wrong, as in rationally wrong. Not as how in... is it rationally wrong or right for me to do anything? It's it's all about our preferences. It all comes down to our preferences. Well, okay, like if it was just about your preferences, then like for example, if you had a preference to let's say put a fork in a plug socket, um, should you do it? I mean, if somebody has that preference, we should just let them do it. I wouldn't because I have a pre I I have my preferences are different from them. I, my preferences is to stop them. I would don't you have say any... that would be irrational. 
like by following their preference to put a fork in a plug socket. Yeah, they're being rational, and I would be rational what? to try to stop them. No, I don't think they are being rational. Because okay, what they, so let's what they intend to do when they you know put the fork in the plug socket is overall bring themselves a greater experience. All right. So let's and say somebody has. The fork in let's the plug say, socket, let's, let's, say, let's talk about a psychopath. Let's say there's a psychopath that has no desire in seeing other people's uh, happiness yeah, and gets pleasure. Okay, what? Yeah, psychopaths so, can be ethical. I have ethical obligations exactly the same as anyone else. Okay. No, but let's say a sadistic person that could. They, I mean, ethical obligations are just um, social contracts that we come up with. No, no, social contractarianism is absolutely wrong because social contractarianism assumes that when an individual associates with another individual, it's purely on an egoistical level to attain their own uh, interests, which they've assumed. The point is that ethics actually comes before social contractarianism. It's actually Hegel's critique of contractarianism, right, but in which he shows let me, that let me make to have the point. knowledge <laughs> necessary to have the knowledge necessary uh, to have those egoistical desires, those selfish interests, you would already have to be in an ethical relationship with someone to have the epistemological uh, institutions that allow you to oh. gain that knowledge in the first place okay but like, okay so you speak a lot faster and so, say a lot more but then so, i can but can i can, can you give me the chance to tell you what i think and yeah yeah of course give it, sorry okay what i think is that all these rules and obligations is just people like us who care about who do have the preference of seeing other people happy and do get emotionally distressed from seeing other people in misery these rules and regulations are just our way of force of the majority of us. We are forcing our way on the minority who do not have these desires. And I'm glad that we managed to force this on the society. You know what I mean? I, I all think that there is, in, there is no inherent obligation or duty. If, if, if a sadistic person gets pleasure out of torturing somebody... And if there was no social consequences from them doing so, there is no logical reason why they shouldn't torture somebody. Oh, there is, absolutely. But, okay, but let me make my point. I only think that it it makes logical... For, I get distressed from seeing somebody being tortured. So it makes logical... Logically, I'm. it makes sense for me to try to stop somebody that is torturing another person. But what logical argument, let, let's say I'm going to say this and I'm torturing somebody and there's zero social consequences, like I could get away with torturing somebody. Mm -hmm. What logical argument would you have against me to stop? I would say that your ability to even understand that it's in your interests would be a logical deduction that's occurred Why would it be between in individuals. Why would it be like, in my interest? Well, what stop. I'm saying is that like the, 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 the sadist that asserts what their interest is is the one making the epistemological error because what they are doing is asserting a notion of good or right without any epistemological justification without any rational evidenced proof and that rational evidence proof occurs within a institutional format which allows us to verify and falsify you know whether it is good bad right and wrong i don't know what uh, you mean Can you try to so, explain it a different way so um like someone who's a serial killer who wants to kill other people they, uh, uh, let's just stick with my sadist. My sadist okay, wants the to sadist who wants to torture someone, right? Um, and there is the sadist, zero consequences to it. And there's going to be zero consequences personally to them, okay? Right? And they know this, okay? Fair enough. They assert that it, it that they are justified in acting in their pure selfish interest. They don't care. No, no. This this sadist does, it doesn't care. About but if they're not logical, then there's no point in talking about. There's no. Why is it logical? <laughs> they don't think like. No, no. Wait. They don't even, the, why should they, why is it logical for them to care about what's justified and what's not justified? Well, this is, this is, this is the point. Like every human action, it entails that, like, for example, if I have a preference or, or, or every human action, I act in such a way to bring around a consequence, which I believe will bring overall benefit to me and my Okay, so that's what you mean by just oh, the greatest number of people. He only cares about the pleasure that I bring I never said head. greatest number of people there. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Uh, so okay, so if that's, so that's if that's, a, that's what you mean purely, by just that's at a purely that, egoistical level, right? Okay, so if you if you mean if that's what you mean by justified, okay, fine. He thinks it's justified. Then okay. what? Okay, so he so he's making an assertion that that is justified. That to act on an individualistically, on act individualistically to only care about himself in this scenario 
is justified. Mm -hmm. He asserts that to be what he should be doing in this case, right? Mm -hmm. I'm saying that is epistemologically flawed because the right. only way he could gain knowledge over what he wants is the consideration of, of uh, considered application of concepts which are not private to him. That application of concepts such as benefit, interest, reward. Um, oh, oh, yeah, he considered uh, all of those and he doesn't care. Yeah. Except all of those are why he, are, are the are how he works out what he wants to do in the first place. That the way that yeah. he determines what he should and or w would want to do is through the application of these concepts. Okay, and if those concepts are created by, you know, cooperative individuals who verify and falsify their their experiences in relation to uh, the overall experiences of everyone, they're universal, they're objective from a given individual, then. There's, there's no there's no way that he could apply a concept that was purely selfish, purely egoistical, which you is why I'm me. saying egoism to, is inherently flawed. You lost me again. Can you try to explain that in a different way? Sorry. Um, so when he tries to say, like, I will really, uh, it is good for me to kill the, or, or hurt this person. Torture right? this person. The torture of this person, right? It's I, good I'm enjoying me. it. Is, yeah, is giving yeah. I, will, I, well, I will enjoy it, right? Um, right? You know, whatever. All of the right. concepts he's just used, um, especially, the, like, for example, um, enjoyment, uh, good, uh, like, um, desirable, whatever is used yeah. in this scenario, relates to the common experiences between individuals okay. in relation to those phenomenological yeah. experiences. And yeah? he took that all into account. He knows. He knows right. this comes from other people. He, the only reason yeah. why he's, he's able to answer your question is because... Uh, he has to be aware of all these people's experiences and their standards and blah, blah, blah. He knows and all so, that. Like, but... Yeah, it's a standard that right? is objective from him. So what is desirable, yeah, good, Yeah, but he doesn't so care on. about the standard. Why should he care about the standard? Because without that standard, he can't care about anything and in order to achieve what is good for what? him in the first place. He, 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 like, How is that the follow? Ego, like, you, you, cannot, like, you cannot consider something. Like, for example, it would just be, you could be rational. You could be could aware of other people's standards without caring about it. That's Not other people's standards. I'm saying the standards of justification in the first place, whether he is right or wrong, in relation to his own reasoning, his own application of reasoning. He could be, okay, but he could be understanding that based on my standards, this is something that I enjoy and I can continue doing it. Well, Without not based on his standards. That would be a flaw then, wouldn't it? Okay. You, mean, you mean based on his, like, uh, this is based so on his weird. emotional states? It's kind of like saying, like, this is so weird. Like, it doesn't follow. It doesn't necessarily follow. It doesn't have to follow. Oh, it does. What are you talking about? So, what like, look at it like this, right? Like, if he was to assert that, like, it is enjoyable to kill people, right? And let's say right. he even come to the conclusion that it is. Like, he, he might even be able to say he does enjoy killing people. And we can mm. conclude that. And people can verify and falsify. Like, yeah, like, Frank loves killing people, man. Like, he loves torturing and murdering people. Like, you know, Frank. And you're like, f like cool. Yeah, like, Frank like likes killing people. Right. Now, if you used to say, I should kill people, or I am justified in doing so, that my behaviors are actually the right course of action for me. Okay. And we have okay. concepts such as right, justified, uh, um, good. All right. Okay. Right. Okay. Each one of these is de is only possible in relation to experiences which are common. That I go. This okay. is an experience of you know uh, good. That okay. justified is an experience of rationally evidence proof. Right. That like that you are right in saying that is good. And when I say that you are right, what I'm saying is that you have given uh, equal consideration to the foundations of those concepts. Those concepts are not in contradiction. So if I was to say Wait, you it is right good now. to kill okay. people mm -hmm. and good is based off, let's say, uh, the experiences of individuals which exist in a common domain and right. those okay. experiences okay. is an experience of subjectivity, which is phenomenologically positive or negative, right? And because it's not simply my own experiences, it's not a private experience, it's the consideration of everyone right. in the language oh. community's experiences, is my application of good and killing people justified or are they in contradiction okay why okay let's say he acknowledged the standards and that it, where they came from and the fact that there are other experiences and other people and blah 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 
And his application of good would be have to relate to those individuals' experiences. Yeah, but but why does that mean that he should want just for acknowledging that there exists doesn't mean that he should there's any logical reason for why he can you should want, want what isn't good? Could you want to I have negative. What isn't good for him? But like when, he only when you wants, say, he knows other people want other things, but he only wants what's good for him. Why does he? Why do you think that he only wants what's good for him? Like in terms of when he acts to want, when he acts to do, like with a preference. Okay, so we say that's individualistic. His reasoning to whether to gauge whether that preference is justified is collective. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that he should care about what those just because he acknowledges the existence of other people's experiences that doesn't mean that he should take in he care about what those experiences be and it's imp- it's epistemologically impossible for him to come to the conclusion that he is able to reject the experiences of another and he doesn't be have to reject them. he could he could ac- he could accept that there exists of their existence without wanting them to be positive experiences he doesn't have to reject their existence he just has to reject the desire for them to be positive ones. But the, the, no, the desire for them to be positive in the first place is connected for his desire. Like, that's the whole point. Like when we talk about they're desire, connected, but when they we talk about good, connected, these are but that experiences mean... of like recognition of the same thing in another individual and self-associate those things with you so that you can you are able to yeah. use them in your reasoning. Yeah, so I can so go, he... this is but good, this is that... bad. So if I say I this is good, but it's bad for you, but it's a universally applied concept. How can it be both good and bad simultaneously? We run into because a contradiction. He all, be, no, it's not a contradiction because yeah, it's good for me, it's bad for them. But you've it's, you've made a mistake in personalizing the concept. You've taken a universal and you've oh made it a particular. God. You've went really good understand. for him. Do you see what good? I mean? Yeah, but good. He, it's no longer good. It's no longer good. He yeah. doesn't care if it's good for I mean he knows that and other people yeah, is you not can good say for he's other that does, that, no, he's that's not right. irrational he just doesn't care I really don't understand this maybe I'm being stupid okay? he cares about what is good inherently because he no. wants to achieve that goodness okay right oh would you agree he wants to live a good life yeah a good life in is a, a good life for him is a world that other everybody other than him is suffering well how would he know that from them screaming. <laughs> right. So, like, he says, like, a good life for him is, right. um, and let, let's say, like, he, he knows oh, that his preferences I, are for, for others to suffer. I don't understand how it follows. Maybe somebody could explain it to me. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, I mean, I'm, just, maybe I'm just not as, I'm, yeah, I'm, pr- you're probably smarter than I am, but I don't I mean, see like, how it follows. There's no reason to think that. Like, but the, the thing is, is that, like, um, like, me, 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 point of what I'm trying to get at is that if it's a universe... Do you think it's logically, like, let's say I, I create the most sadistic human possible, mm-hmm. and the best world for him is a world where the maximum amount of pain exists for the maximum number of people, okay? That's the best experience for him. He would be just like, oh my god, that's the best thing ever. It's what he what would enjoy the most, yeah. Enjoy the most. There's no logical argument I could have. That I mean, you 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 think otherwise, but I think there is no logical argument I can have against this person. The only thing I can do is to make it impossible for this person to achieve their dream. Like I, I disagree. I think that like obviously, I think that um that when they try to conceptualize about what they should or should not do, like the whole point of ethics is in relation to behavior. Um, like you know, like uh, was it uh, ethicos uh, pertaining to behavior? Um, then what we will see is that when the individual tries to determine what, how they should behave in their life in order to achieve their goal of living a good life, they will have to apply concepts which do not simply obtain to their experiences. They'll have to apply concepts such as good, the good life. The good life for him is inherently tied into the good life for everyone. His understanding of it, of good itself, metaphysically, it's only possible because of language, of because of our uh, uh, of our right. co- cooperative it, venture. Sorry, I just don't see how it follows. I'm I'm, go- I'm gonna try, but right now okay. I don't see how it follows. Okay, I'll so try harder. He he wants to achieve a good yeah, life. Let's move in his actions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not, not, okay. yeah. Okay. And a good life. Okay. Like good. Uh, a good life. Good is defined 
by more individuals than him for it to be objective. No, that's the definition. Your definition. That's not no, his definition. That's, defi- that's just how definitions work. He can't give me a definition. Language has one. Okay, so what's good for you that is not good for him. What do you mean? Good is a very loose... What do you mean? There are some words that mean different things to different people. Like, yeah, I, I mean, mean, in this like... context, obviously, I mean, like, we, we can change it to, like, you know, like, good as in being, like, a, a performative function. Like, it's, it's, it's good at doing something. Like, uh, the good knife is the one that cuts. Um, but we're using it in an, in an abstract universal concept which relates to positive experiences. Right? When I, okay, so may, ba- based on your definition of what a good life is, he doesn't want a good life. So he wants to suffer. No, he, his suffering, his happiness depends on other people having a bad life. How is that a contradiction? No, like the point, the, the, like the point I'm trying to say is that his his the application of his reasoning itself. It's is not like, a. Co- I okay. What to I'm understand saying, I don't his think, goal. To understand I'm his goal. I'm just saying, just to simplify it, I'm just trying to say that I don't think it's a contradiction to say that a sadist would define a good life. To be a life where everybody else is having a bad life. I don't <laughs> think that's like a contradiction. it that way, but that's. I don't think that's. <laughs> I don't think that's logically a contradiction. A like, good like, life. Like, look, why does the sadist think that suffering is that everyone else's suffering is a good thing in the first place? He like that's his goal. Like why does he? he why does he think he wants that? He gets pleasure out of it. You can't explain right. pleasure. But why does he think co- that he wants to have well, the most pleasurable life possible? Respect, irrespective just of everything. wired that way. Just biologically, we're wired that. It's kind of like asking why do you prefer green over blue? No, well, you can be biologically to appreciate pleasure, but that doesn't mean you have to act upon it. People actively uh, dis- dis- uh, distance themselves. You don't from have to. You to. just want to. Well, not necessarily. I mean, like for example, I might, I might actively choose to suffer for the interest of another, right? Well, you again, you're doing something that you want because you care about the. You're doing something that you want, but that's not actively bringing you pleasure. It is because the other person's pleasure is giving you more pleasure than the suffering that you're. Well, how what, would it would it necessarily be more pleasure? You saying yeah. that you so for example how would, you're how would you be slave, that? You're a slave of your desires. You can't. That's why I don't think you do even have you know you can't. See, then then you're no, then you're making an a point on free will which I disagree with. Oh okay, so we are fundamentally saying, yeah okay yeah, so I I see where our disagreement is. Yeah yeah, yeah I think I, I don't be, I think like we're all. Terminist. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a I'm, I'm a compatibilist. I mean, I I'm, I'm I agree with coming up with new definitions of what it means to be free because we need those words for those words. Like, I I do agree with the version of compat you know compatible. I don't know if they're considered compatibilist or not, but I think there needs to be something. You know, with, like if somebody points a gun at me and asks for my money and I give them the m- money. Or, or if I give the money to somebody without them pointing a gun at me, I do believe that in both of those situations, we were determined to do that. But we do need a language that differentiates between these two. You know what I mean? Is it, like I'd, do, say, I'd, I'd say that like um, the application like, of concepts like determinism really like, I'd say that epistemology, epistemology as a whole is based on an ethical relationship between individuals in which we are able to falsify and verify. Let's not go down that road. That's going to take. A... No, but the, 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 I know, I know. But the, the point of the matter yeah. is, is that obviously that the causal notion of humanity is inherently um, contradictory. That it actually right. undermines well, its track, own though. its own Let's reason. Let's go back. That, um, the, what I was trying to get at before we got off track was that because I think that I'm already being, I'm like we're we're all technically evil by the decisions that we make like the phone that i got didn't have to be this expensive um like i think okay so i know you disagree with this and i think like um we're thinking about morality and ethics in different ways but i just want you to understand where i'm coming from right so what i have accepted is that i have i have i am i'm evil and most people are evil, uh, except the the people that are living max extreme minimalist lives and dedicating their what entire everything. What do you mean everything. by? Do you mean like as in like when you say like, evil? Like what well, do you even mean? As in like so, so you're like, doing the as, wrong thing? Like no. What I'm saying is that most people would think that I don't see much technically that much of a difference between action and inaction, right? So, for example, the example I give is that if you tie like let's say yeah, there's a machine that somebody is 
tied to. And if you press a button next to the machine, the person will die. And the person is innocent. Um, and if you just kill that person, you're doing something immoral, right? Uh, and in the second scenario, like it's the same machine, a person is tied to it. But instead of just a button, there's a countdown, a 10 minute countdown. And if it goes to zero, the person will die. But if you press the button before the, the, it goes to zero, you will stop the person from dying, right? Mm -hmm. I think in the second scenario, if you just look at the button and don't press it and the person dies, it will be morally equivalent to you pressing the button in the first scenario, right? So people- yeah, kind of like uh, Sartre, I'm honest, condemned to be free. Right, so I think like there's not that much of difference between an acting and killing somebody or a not acting where whereas you could do did something with no cost to you and you technically killed the person in the second scenario even though you didn't do shit, right? So that's why I think like me being able to kill us to save a child from starvation at any moment and with fifty dollars and deciding not to do that and spending it on anything else every time I buy a shoe, every time I buy a new phone, a headphone, clothes. I'm actively, and each one of those moments, I'm deciding that this matters to me more than those starving children. It technically is the same as killing a child for those shoes. So I know you disagree, but that's where I am right now, okay? So I do believe that, given that I see them as morally equivalent, I do believe that I'm evil, most people are evil. Uh, all I'm trying to do is to be a bit less evil. Yeah. So, so you I'm... said you said you said to me though that you agreed that our institutions um, embed our rational, like our rules embed the reasons from our action and our obligations, so that we can maximize our effectiveness and doing the quote unquote best possible thing, utilitarian wise, right? We said. Right. So like right. we'll, we'll have laws that prevent you from like speeding, breaking traffic lights, things like that. Right. Yeah. Um. All other obligations, I would say, are also embedded in that same scenario who who you consider like first and foremost in relation to um you know your ethical obligations to other humans you have a, a greater responsibility to look, raising your own children than raising a stranger's children right um and that's even codified right. in the law right right so like right. for example you should make sure that your children are living um like, you know good lives quote unquote uh, before some strangers' children are living good lives. Okay, of course. Sir, so just to be clear, I don't think those. I think those. That's the best, the most effective way to run a society. I don't think those rules and obligations that these institutions come up with. That's not the definition of what ethics and morality is. I think, um, you know, so ex I don't think like for example those those institutions should come up with a rule for everything and there are a lot of things that could be immoral even though those institutions have not codified it in any way right for well, example I, mean, like, I don't think I don't, don't for example you can I have ethical I institutions don't, I, that don't enforce by law so for example um, I know you're an atheist channel um, but I would say that like um, you know you would agree that the religious ethics existed. Uh, and in that, they codified certain behaviors in relation to maybe unfounded obligations, but they did codify them. Um, right. But they weren't enforced by law, like under threat or anything. You could right. see that, that, that you could have an ethical institution, which is not. Um... I think the codification sometimes becomes like, so uh, I think the, at some point it becomes so different from one individual to another individual that I think you should only codify the things that are I think you should codify every fucking thing. You know what I mean? Like it becomes too much detail at some point. At some point, at some point when it comes, you know, I think the most important things should be codified and maybe turn into rules. And some things, there are other things that should be you calculated. Can also have, you can there, also there have are, like verbal There are things that should be calculated from a moment to another. And it's so individual based. Like there are room for not, you know, there are things that are different between you and me. And well, I mean, the, I mean, there's the fact that, like, for example, you get in a phone, uh, having an obligation to have an a phone for yourself might be a necessity because of it. It's for your safety. It's for whatever. Uh, overall Do I need my air cooler? But then did you did you need to um, get an expensive phone? I think you give the right. example of when right. you could help other individuals. Right. Um, they, that's fair enough. And, and, and that would that would be fair enough. But isn't um, that? But even if even if you were to say, like, I would say, like, let, let, let's say. You would again that the obligation to yourself you've overstepped 
that like you're in uh, in acting to help yourself over other individuals you've done the wrong thing right through basic obligation right towards yourself and to others right um i'd be happy to say that's the case i don't see the issue um but then you're just saying i did the wrong thing that's fair enough right we do the wrong thing sometimes yeah that doesn't mean mean that you that, that that you were justified in doing it it just means that you did the wrong thing. If anything, it means yeah. you are unjustified in doing it and you've got the information to go, I shouldn't have done that. Um, I mean, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm doing a lot of unjustified things. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what I think is as, as, a, as a human, I have, again, this is not how you look at morality, but I think that my desire to be moral comes from my is my sympathy for my fellow conscious beings okay that's what i think where it comes from you come you think it comes from logic no, i, I mean your desire to be moral i mean your personal desire to to try and engage in ethics might come from that but that right. doesn't mean that's but, like the foundation of ethics it just means that's why you engage with it well but i think me and most humans um have a limited emotional capital to spend Sympathy is not an unlimited resource you could tap into, okay? And if the goal is to make people completely consistent on all their moral decisions, you're going to exhaust them. And you might even overdo it to a certain to a degree that they don't care about anything. I think well, sympathy... Well, we both agree that to not consider an individual's uh, you know, capacity for action would be right. would be wrong except i think that the point of the matter is like if we're talking animal agriculture the very small inconvenience of choosing a vegan option um to me that's not a small convenience oh it's a massively it? small inconvenience actually i mean not giving me. up that smartphone would have been harder um like i mean look well, at it like give, this for me giving like, up meat would be harder oh really like really like if you look at it like this why do you you know like for example think it would be really hard to give up meat i really like meat Right, you really like meat, okay. And you don't think you could like another non-animal product, as in you are incapable of gaining pleasure from plants. So, I mean, I am, but not as much as meat. I mean, if you uh, could make, if if you could show, if you could bring me somebody that makes me better food than meat with vegan options, I would gladly switch. So far, nobody. Right. I mean, like able people, to... you can't get vegan meats that are really convincing and really like delicious. Not, not where I am. Well, well, where do you live? Right now, I live in the Philippines. Right, in the Philippines. I don't know what I don't know what actually is available in the Philippines. Um, right. But if like, you can I mean, make I, I've, me, I've if you could make vegan, me no vegan, if you could make me, if you could make me same nutrition, same cost, same tasting. Oh, I mean, I, you, I could do. I mean, you could do cheaper. Um, yeah, uh, I would higher switch. nutrition. <laughs> I would switch. I would. Switch. I would yeah. switch. But you, yeah, no, I, I mean, like beans, rice, lentils, legumes. Vegetables, no. they're all the healthiest, cheapest foods. No, I don't like those. I don't like those. Vegetables. Yeah, well, the, the, you said healthy. <laughs> no, I said, you don't like I, said multi- I had multiple <laughs> conditions. I had multiple conditions. Same nutritional value, protein per calorie ratio, good taste. Okay, so why protein and, per calorie ratio? Huh? Why oh, because I'm trying to get protein while maintaining a lean, but, you know. I'm trying okay, to, okay, so what do you need? Like 0.75. Uh, I don't know. It's 0.75. Um, it's, it's, zero, it's actually 0. 0.6 to 1.1 1. 1 right. gram protein per pound of lean mass for peak athletic performance. Average an out at about 0. 0.75 per pound of lean mass, right? So let's say, do you know how much you weigh? Right. Um, 160... Five. But I know, I, I mean, right. if you could, I, I, I agree, um, but I'm saying, it, I know what your point is. If you could give me that option, I'll take it. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you have that. But, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that you have that option now. It? And that, you probably where? overestimate how much protein you need. I mean, how much protein do you think you need? I mean, just to be safe, I know this is more than what I need. I try to go a, a, um, a gram per pound. A gram per pound. So that's like, what, 160 grams of protein? A day, yeah. Yeah, I 165. That's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, yeah. Be, you don't you don't need I mean like yeah, let's say even, even all, if you wanted right. to do a gram per pound, totally do it on animal uh off animal products. Okay, what what should I eat? Tell me what should I eat? Uh I'd say like beans, lentils, legumes, things like black beans. I don't beans, like just beans and I don't like that. But you, you said I said it's gonna be the same taste as well. You said that that's available. It has to be well, same nutritional like, value and same taste. Well, I'm saying that that yeah, okay, same price. Oh, right, okay. But then what you're really doing is like if it's not meat, I don't want it, right? 
but like th- like the point i'm trying to say is that like like even in the consideration right of other individuals let's say with the smartphone if you were to say like i was wrong in buying that smartphone without considering another individual i'd say that you have to admit that you are just as wrong in consuming animal products without yeah, considering I'm- them yeah, I am admitting okay, that. So, I'm just saying so that. I'm, you're not saying I'm, that I'm, it's justified to eat animals. What you're saying is that you're selfish. Yeah. But that's fine. Like, okay, you're selfish, right? Like, okay, that's most of humanity. Like, there's a lot of selfish people in the world, I'm right? Not saying that's it's okay. not okay. I'm, I'm, like, I'm not, it's wrong. I'm not saying it's okay. I just forgive myself. <laughs> well, I forgave myself for turning on this aircon, even though it's, I know it's evil. I for, I'm forgiving myself from turning it on. I know it's evil. I know this is the right thing to do. Would have been to turn it off, accept the discomfort you think, that I'm. Do you think that you do? You think that um, so uh, like what what you're essentially doing is you're saying that reason be damned, no. I will tell you what I want, and that's good enough. I'm not saying reason be damned. Well, I'm I mean, just you might re- as well be because you're saying that it's okay to be uh, ethically wrong. No, what I'm saying is that. I'm logical enough to realize that this is evil. So you're logical but enough to realize that it's wrong, but you're not wrong. I mean, my definition of wrong is different from yours. So yeah, based on your definition, I'm wrong. Okay. Okay, but you're but not motivated enough to do something about it. Yes, exactly. So why don't you then work? Would it not be rational to then work on self motivation? Yeah, I mean, but what, what what I do, I'm I'm exercise like I have certain level of sympathy. Where I choose to spend that sympathy is, you know, is my choice, right? Why do you need, I mean, why, do you need why, sim- why do you need to spend this sympathy is why I say, as if it's as if it's a currency? That's um, what I'm saying. It's a it's a not it's not an unlimited resource. But you don't it's need a, to, you don't need to be sympathetic all about, the time. Like you I'm just need to that's just what need. we are all doing. That's what we're all doing. Like I disagree. We're all, well, let me let me just say I think we're I mean. Unless you have given up on everything other than reducing suffering, like you have done that, like did you did you do you give your own haircut or do you pay for your haircut? I don't know. Well, I mean, right now I'm I'm actually kind of stuck inside. <laughs> so do you usually, like I don't know, like you know, like I'm not trying to put you in the spot, but I'm pretty sure. Do you pay, buy things that you don't technically need but you want? Yeah. Right. So I'm saying like. I'm not. Try- I'm not trying to like in- say anything insulting or anything, but I'm just saying. Uh-huh. Like, maybe, I'm not like maybe. You- That's yeah, abstract. But I'm, right, but I'm just saying. Like, I know some people have more sympathy. Some people have less sympathy. But we all have limited amount of sympathy that we can spend. You would and agree. The only that people that are not. Give up animal products. No, let me just let me clarify. So, the only people that haven't maximize like the only people that are technically not evil are the people that have are not doing anything that they don't need okay that are just doing all like everything they're spending their money and resources and time and energy on is dedicated to reducing of suffering of the highest number of conscious being possible anything that diverts from that you are deciding that the current suffering in the world that exists is less important than that, okay? And I know actually some people that think like this and are and have uh, have Saints. done that minim- minimal. No, not like... since. No, I've seen like some atheist seculars co- in Vancouver. I mean, they can be that. atheist. I'm just using saint in a in a in a right. as in like in a, the, yeah. the morally um, virtuous. Like they, okay, yeah, or, yeah, yeah good, because saints people. weren't actually actual saints. The real saints were not actually good people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not arguing <laughs> right. for Christianity. Right, okay, okay. So yeah, saints, saints, yeah. But other than that, the rest of us are evil, and we are picking our battles. We're like, we're deciding, like, okay, I'm gonna care. I'm gonna try to increase my care. I'm gonna try to care today more than I cared yesterday. It's like a muscle that you're exercising, right? You're just like, if you're doing weights, you're like, I'm just trying to become a little bit stronger today than I was yesterday. So if I if this I say, what like... I, my goal is, my goal is to just be a little bit less evil today than I was yesterday. All right. right, but I'm to not the, gonna. Well, like, to I'm the, not gonna as stop in, like, being. You say evil. that like you do. You do it as much as like you are able to, right? Like you'd say that like, yeah. like yeah. although I think that's a bit. Yeah. It's a bit of a cop out. All of us tell ourselves that like you know we could we could do we could do uh, normally could a, do. I'm, but, not, 
I'm not copying out because I'm calling myself. I've seen all of evil. us do a little bit. I think we'll all do a little bit, and I think we do excuse ourselves of some, some behaviors that mightn't be excusable. I think that's just the, that's just humans. Like that's what we do. Right? Maybe bad faith, for example. Like well, we, well, I couldn't do anything else anyway. But that's not the point. Like the, the the point of what I'm saying is that like take for example, you talk about uh, sympathy as like it's some sort of currency. One, you like 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 you know like I care about to everything. consider like one. I, I think sympathy in general is um obviously not necessarily the motivation for action and as, as to be ethical that's f- fair enough but like let's just say it was let's say and like you're what you're being sympathetic towards um it's it, if you're saying it's a purely emotional state then it's just it just depends on what you feel right in which case ethics be damned it's not related to what we're doing anyway humans aren't ethical then and in which case you shouldn't be having an ethical debate but that's on, your on definition ethics. of ethics no, I'm, no, i think no. i think ethics would not exist if we didn't have sympathy so but I, my, my point is, is that what you've done is you've actually moved it to emotivism, and then you're saying that those more uh, emotive foundations are determined ethics, within our being. Is, but what you're saying what, is that I like, think what ethics are are the most logical ways for us to satisfy our desire for kindness. So I think, like, as the, the, so the, the that is the true, if, if that is true, right, and that it like let's just assume that it is. Uh, that it's the most uh, logical way to satisfy our motivations for kindness. And that kindness is a reflection of the experiences of the other, which is uh, everyone, anyone else. Then overall, uh, the greatest expressions of, of sympathy, of, of our kindness, would be in the, re- the greatest reduction of suffering that individuals face, right? Now, animal agriculture kills 80 billion land animals a year and uh, kills so many sea animals that it's measured in tons. The suffering that they face, for example, take a fish being ripped out of the ocean is perhaps having its stomach explode, or its lungs are sick, but not lungs, uh, its stomach explode. Um, Wouldn't the fish die a slow, painful death if we left it alone as well? Now, sometimes they do die a really horrible, painful death. Uh, no, and mean, then, wouldn't and they, if they don't wouldn't, die, wouldn't all of them death, anything then they're sometimes die? gutted alive or, or, or um, no, you know, have a head cut off or smack over the head. Fish don't really get nice treatment like at all. Like, uh, like no, the, the, but if you didn't take them out of the water, they would have died slow, painful deaths anyways. Uh, why do you think that? Like, you mean like How they would have died die? naturally? Like, you mean as in yeah, like, they would have died a natural death? That yeah. perhaps they would have been evolutionarily maybe well, maybe better designed for as well. So, like for example, right. like some of the evolutionary, we all the, die. Nature, you die pain, slow deaths. Yeah, like na- like nature. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that we are justified in causing painful slow deaths. I mean, you're just replacing one painful and as well, slow like death with and you're not replacing Wait, you're one. Just pa- replacing, like, the, you're just replacing one painful slow death with another painful slow death. I mean, well, not really, because I mean, like let's be honest. Let's take for example a fish that gets eaten by another fish. That other fish is still going to have to eat another fish. So really, you've just caused two. Um, it's like, it's like, for example, if you go and shoot a, a, a rabbit, right? And then you go, oh, well, it was going to get eaten by a fox. I've done it a favor. That fox is still going to eat a rabbit. Like, you haven't actually mitigated the suffering of the rabbit. You've just, uh, you've just exp- created so two separate well, aspects well, of suffering. <laughs> well, this is the thing. Like, you, you, the so nature, shoot that unless, rabbit unless you're going to destroy nature, there is no way to reduce suffering in nature, right? Well, unless what, you're if to, what if, like, what ultimately if there's just destroy too many rabbits? What but, if there's just too many rabbits that no fox is about to eat? They're just going to, if you don't kill the bunnies, they're going to die from starvation or slow, painful death. So now, like, well, hunting season. Would, well, one, you wouldn't, like, for, for one, like, I do get in this argument with hunters. One, you wouldn't shoot them, uh, you would euthanize them. Two, uh, that's if it's a last resort. Why don't you instead, let's say, um, uh, neuter them, catch, capture, capture and release schemes. Also, you can also have what's called gene drives, where you get um, you genetically modify certain amount of the animals, put them back into the uh, the habitat, which then uh, pass on a gene which makes them infertile, right, which prevents all population. What I'm saying it was, but I'm so, saying that you like, agree that killing them would have been better than shooting, like. Well, then letting them go. Anyways, well, yeah, I, I, would, I would agree. But the same with thing with humans. If humans are, you know, reaching the point of overpopulation where we're going to starve ourselves to death, then uh, and um, you know we can choose between actively limiting our population to prevent the overall suffering of individuals. I say people are starving, and they are given the option. Like, you can you can walk into this gas chamber. Uh, and I know people like have a thing with gas chambers, but like they're actually probably uh, dependent on the gas you use. Probably one of the most yeah, innate. We're getting uh, off track. What we were saying, what, I, what I was saying Not is, kill pigs with like uh, actually be. That's what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is that the way I motivate myself to be, to care more, is the same way I mo- try to advertise, act more people caring about. I think it's a very unrealistic 
Um, How is it unrealistic to, to say that, like, someone to eat, like, for example, right, most of your diet will most likely be, like, for the most part, most humans but, is not animal products anyway. It's, okay, it's so like, here's the thing. Here's my question, I guess. You, you, why, wh- give me an example of something you spend money on that you could have given that you didn't need. Can you give me an example? This microphone, right, yeah. Okay. I mean, because, well, that microphone actually could help your activism if, like, no, that's not good because you're, maybe yeah. you think that the better quality ITO makes you help more animals. Give me an example. I, I don't know, like, like um, currently decorating, so, like, wallpaper. Okay, wallpaper, right? So, why wouldn't you not get the wallpaper and donate to, char- give that money to charity? What's the reason? So, I think that there is a psychological... Um, I would say that we all have a lim- a, a necessary psychological like a uh, consideration for ourselves and uh, a responsibility towards ourselves to live a decent and uh, pleasurable life. Oh, okay, good. That's why I eat meat. Right. Except that doesn't necessarily follow, does it? Like you can have a psychologically beneficial life without eating meat. Okay, if you could give me that, I'll switch to plant based. But I think you can like do that, and I think you know you can do that. And I'd say just that. for example, like and if and if and, and the you wallpaper mean, scenario. The taste is like the wallpaper I'm scenario. About the taste as well, uh, right? There is also the point of intention, right? So yeah. I know that you're a consequentialist, but I would say that intention is vitally important. That my intention when I, you know, purchase wallpaper um, wasn't to actively not donate to charity. That might be a, an effect of having spent the money on the wallpaper, but it was mm. for um let's say psychological well-being. Now you might turn around and say, Well, my intention when I could, when I buy meat and dairy and products is to um, is not to hurt the animal, but simply to consume the flesh, right? I understand, double flesh, right? My point would be that the necessary conditions of buying wallpaper in every scenario is not the suffering of a child. I could it then is. go and spend, no, because I could go and spend some money on, uh, on helping people in charity, which I do, right? So I haven't necessarily, I might have chose not to buy uh, another aspect of my, from my experience t- towards that, right? Now I'd say that I was obligated like in, in many scenarios to maybe choose a cheap no, wallpaper wait. and I not spend I don't agree with that. Or... Even, even if you donate, even if you donate all your money to charity, if you still buy the wallpaper, you're deciding that after the money you donated, this wallpaper is still, is more important than, than one extra child that you could have helped. Right. Um, so technically you are making that decision, even if you have put some money, See, this is the point like for example there's a difference between like if i contribute to let's say like i mean what would be a better example is if i contribute let's say to the exploitation of wallpaper manufacturers which are producing wallpaper and being hurt uh would be more akin but that's to, why i give you the example with the machine with the button to say, to show why they're more yeah, like, no, that, that's the point i'm saying that there is the intention like the machine with the button like i'd say that there is a difference between not pressing the button on and pressing the button there is an actual difference you think if I if the, there's a countdown and all I have to do is press the button and the person wouldn't die and I just sit, sit there and do nothing, that is not morally equivalent to the scenario where I. I wouldn't say it's morally the... equivalent. I would say it's unjustified. You should have pressed the button, but it's not morally equivalent. Like mm-hmm. uh, just have you okay, ever? Okay, so we disagree. Fat... I think they're morally equivalent. Yeah. And have you ever heard of the fat man trolley problem? Yeah. Yeah. Same sort of scenario. What's the difference between pulling the lever and pushing a man in front of the? in front of the trolley morally that are equivalent exactly my point see I, I i don't think they are oh i'd say that the intention like like when you push someone in front of a trolley you are active you are you are making a, an intentional difference there's an intentional difference there in same which like, thing when you're pulling the lever you're making the same decision it's you're killing the fat man you're doing the I, exact same thing i suppose that we should actually differentiate it between the, the, the fat man trolley problem and let's say uh because the fat man trolley problem the point is is that um, obviously, the train won't stop, and there's no lever, right? Now, let's say, like, Wait. if no, you did the difference push, in that you, situation you, is that people think like pulling a, a lever is different from actually putting your hands on a human flesh and pushing them. That's just more emotionally traumatizing. I mean, the whole point of the experience, the experiment, is to show that technically they're the same thing. One of them is just emotionally more disgusting to us, but technically they're the same thing. That's the whole point of sh- the experiment. See, I don't think they're necessarily that they're the, same. the same thing. I don't think they no. necessarily are the same thing. I think that, like, for example, um, being able to intentionally, um, to intentionally, uh, let's say, divert the track 
um, knowing that someone will be so will is be the noise of me chewing and just bothering you? No, right? No, no, no. There's no there's I don't think they're necessarily are intentionally the same. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think they're very similar, and I think that the overall consequences um, lead us to believe that the the duties in which case should probably reflect those consequences, but they're not necessarily equal, uh, like uh, equal so, in in all so in the, all ways. So the the fact that I see them as equal makes me think that you buying the wallpaper and me eating meat is okay. So let's say let's say me buying wallpaper, right? And let's say I could have prevented. Let's say let's say the starving of certain children, um, in in Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, right? Let's say I could have stopped the deaths of five children, right? You buying meat and perpetually uh, contributing to an industry is killing, that is killing billions of animals. Well, the no, wait, 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 wait! My eating, my buying of the meat is not killing billions. It's killing yeah, the only it's ones that I ate. I think they say like was it like an average of uh, three? Is it actually average of like three hundred odd animals a year? I mean dairy and eggs. Yeah, I eat more than that, but okay. Okay, let, well, let's say like let's say like five hundred animals a year. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay, so I eat one chicken. I eat, I eat, I either eat one entire chicken or two fish a day. Okay. And I, I, I also eat a lot of egg. Okay, I say like, okay, we'll say like 800 animals. I, I'm not really that like, right? It just keeps going up, right? It's only like, what I'm just trying to demonstrate is that you could probably do more good by not eating, by simply not eating animal products, which would then give you yeah, more I, money. To then, I, I, I agree. I could do more good by a lot of things. I could do more good by turning off this aircon. Yeah, but like, but like, okay, like, but then we'll agree that you are morally but I'm not obligated. Turn it off, like, yeah, but like, okay, like, let's say we we'll agree sure. that you are. You are morally obligated not, to not eat animal products, but then you don't do it anyway. Am I morally obligated to turn off the aircon right now and talk to you in heat? Am I morally obligated to do that? And, and go online right now and go to, by the way, my favorite charity, if anybody's listening, is called Save the Children, right? Um, check them out if you want to donate to them. Um, so, I, I mean, I know their website. I know it's easy to, I, I, if I turn this off, I know the money that I saved for my electricity bill, will, how much it would change. And I could just right now go on PayPal and use that money to give extra to save the children. I could do that I, right I, now. I, I, I would say that there's a very, the, the point I would say is there's a difference between causing suffering and yeah, that's, not I don't preventing see the it. I don't see the difference. That's my own point. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say that the 100% is. I think the act of, the act of, the act, act of causing it is the choice that you are making. I just think the, you're emotionally more we're just emotion that's an emotion that's not logical. I think we just emotionally see one of them different from the other one. But technically they're the same. Well like not not like look at it like this, right? Like if you didn't if you look if you let, let's say that all things being considered that if you chose not to eat animal products, no animals would die. But then you'd have to choose to donate to charity to prevent the deaths of the children. The deaths of the children were going to occur whether you acted or not. You've actively chose well, to mitigate act- it, which I would say is morally responsible. Your action to cause the deaths of others is directly in relation to your action, which makes you morally culpable for the yeah. initial harm being caused. I'm just... I you just aren't mitigating just, the suffering. You are I, causing... like. Like in, in one is a mitigation of suffering already set to occur. But that's the oh, that entire, is, Yeah, it just feels different. Again, it, it feels no, it's different. It's not just that. It's not just. It's about culpability in that's, in, in terms of what is right and wrong. If it's right that's and wrong, why, is, that's is, the entire is, reason why I came up with that hypothetical with the machine, and we have a dis- disagreement on which one. That uh, I think they're the same, and you think it or not. But even even like even even if, I mean, if, I if think, we agree, yeah. like even if we agree that there is a let's say a rational limit to which in which we mitigate suffering, right? We say we are justified in mitigating suffering, right? But I, then I, I, I would battle. say that there is no justification in causing suffering. Like no, your ability to mitigate suffering is in relation again, to how much repeat, suffering you can mitigate across all of society. Thing. You're just saying so, the same they, thing. You're just saying the same thing in different ways. You're just all your can't you repeat yourself. No, you're saying the point, that the point is there's it's a difference far between... easier. It's far easier not to cause suffering than no. it is 
to than it is to mitigate it. Like in no, terms no, of overall, I, in terms of overall. Actually, uh, actually, my point exactly the hypothetical. First of all, in both scenarios, in real world and in hypothetical, I was showing how it's not easier because in in the hypothetical that I give you, all you had to do was just press a button. It's very easy. I'm just showing you that how easy it was. Um, and in the real world scenario, I was also telling you that it's actually easier for me right now to donate money to charity. It's so easy. It just takes a few clicks. It's easy. It's actually easier than not eating meat. It's easier for me to donate, to save those children from starvation. It just takes a few clicks. I'm just seconds well, I mean, away from achieving that. Not eating meat for me is harder. So if you're talking about which one is harder, like what I'm talking about is simplicity, as in like the overall reduction of of like in, in, in impeding someone's liberty. So like for example, yeah, like I'm my saying point, impeding. Oh, Sorry. So if I was to say like the, the law functions in terms of our duties to actively prevent um, us causing harm to one another, and that's how it functions. It works in a negative, right? And then there is bringing pleasure to someone's life. Now, mm -hmm. am I causing harm to the individual who lives in sub-Saharan Africa for being alive? No, I'm not causing harm. I'm simply not preventing it. My obligation is limited by I the fact yes, that I yes. am not the cause. If I was the cause, it would be different because then I have a personal culpability in relation to that. Now, don't I get me wrong. I do think that we should help other individuals. The extent in which we should help other individuals is also institutionally based in relation okay. to what can be expected um, of an individual just, to mitigate just, harm. And, and I think that is a separate social responsibility. Ways. I'm just saying, but I just, I know, my I know point, point is that, yeah. but the point of what I'm trying to say here is that if we look at the expressions of um, of ethics, then what we see is that most of the time, like, and, and I, I think this for the most part, essentially the reason that we enter the, the scenario is because I want something that you also want, right? Or like, it's like the tragedy of the commons, right? You take more than that's your fair share, which means I am now actively disadvantaged right? right ethics exists to mitigate disadvantage across individuals which is why the law doesn't say you must cause pleasure to someone okay right so otherwise you would have to say that like someone is obligated to cause pleasure to let's say overall yeah. like well like, the only like, reason why laws don't work like that because of the emo right now as as flawed human beings that we are we see them emotionally we have we see them as one of them as disgusting and the other one that we don't like no because... i say that i have no i have no obligation in no. Um, yeah but, but my point in, in but expressing i'm expressing your say... freedom that's your obligation my my obligation is not to inhibit your freedom yeah but the only reason why we think like that is because we emotionally see one of these two acts as as disgusting and the other one as not even though they're the same, I, I, I disagree. I disagree. I think there is a rational difference. I think there is a. I think it's an absolute. I, I think it's rational to recognize the emotional difference that we have towards these two actions. Oh, I think there is an emotional difference that is is involved, but I don't think that it's an emotional so, difference in general, not at all. No, I think it's an emotional difference, and it's Why? rational to take that emotional. Why do you think it's an emotional difference? Why because would you it's technically, the because technically, the, I mean. Because, between killing because to, and allowing because someone ethically, to die. because ethic, because to me, ethics is about consequences, and the consequences are the same. Right and right. So, in the consequences, when you care about consequences, do you just care about them in general, or is it is there a reason? Is it because you're trying to behave and act in a certain way? No, I care about the consequences. You just care about consequences. I mean, the consequences and the effect of those consequences on my mental state. So, like, when you do ethics, it's just a purely descriptive feature in which you describe the world and has nothing to do with how you behave. Well, I mean, I care about how I behave because my behavior affects those consequences. The okay. reason why I care about my behavior is because of the consequences of my behavior. So, but ethics is about behavior. It's about, like, how to overall maximize our behavior, well, right? I mean, it's a chicken and egg thing, okay? Yeah, you care about behavior because you care about the consequences. You care about the consequences... Um, I mean, yeah, one translates to the other one, of course. So the point I'm trying to make is that, like, in consideration of, you know, the, the overall, like, how you behave in the world is what motivated you to ethics. And you agreed, like, I mean, you, you mean, you're the, you're like the one that says that you only care about yourself uh, and your own feelings and your desires. Um, yeah, but then what just to be clear to the people, that means I, I, I do, I mean, that might come off as, Cold, but it's not, and it's egoism. Yeah, because it's, it's not, it's not. Um, because I do care about other people. Okay, like just. But like, that's just part of your own desire. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think everybody is like that.
I did yeah, appreciate that. Uh, we see that what I would say is that like obviously that that we're not like that that the only way that we consider each other is is through mutual cooperation. But right. but by the way, we we gone for more than three hours. No, but the, 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 let's okay. Let's, if, I, if I just yeah, say this one thing, right? So when I actively um, act to express my subjectivity in the world in order to achieve my own ends, because that's what I'm inherently trying to do: express subjectivity so that I may act that my behavior relates to a consequence that I can enjoy and experience. And so what I'm doing is expressing myself. So when I'm trying to express myself and my existence within the world, what I'm doing is I'm relating my experiences with another. And in ethics, the whole point is to try and mitigate how much my experiences conflict with your experiences to the greatest degree, right? So if I mitigate like my actions and the harm done by them, what I'm doing is ultimately, uh, it, it's not that I'm reducing, it's I'm not acting reducing sub, suffering, I'm actively expressing subjectivity to the greatest degree, right? Right. Now, uh, so to, to be, to be, to be, um, let me just admit something. I see how your way of looking at ethics is completely consistent with your conclusions. I can see that, okay? I just think like we're, I don't, we're dealing with different premises here that's fair enough and i understand that like i'm not looking like to to make you right. like kind of like i mean at least you like come out of this and at least agree that one uh, that you know when you said name the trait like the trait wasn't uh self-consciousness like that that it, it that the trait is experience in the first place like that yeah i mean of course yeah i mean that goes then, without saying it's a utilitarian that goes without saying right and then two you would agree that eating animal products is unjustified but that we do unjustified things I mean, I wouldn't call it unjustified. I wouldn't call anything unjustified because that, that's not the term. Unethical. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, um, yeah, I could be. I if I if I didn't buy chicken today, I would have um, reduced the amount of torture in this world by one chicken. But I decided not to do that, and I contributed to the torture of a chicken. But I did way worse things than that well, why do you think you did worse things than that i mean like what's worse than that like let's say a three what do you, i mean what do you do every day that equates yeah. to three years or is it three years i think it is or is it 18 months i think it's 18 months of right. uh suffering mm -hmm. um probably in a close confined well, here's, state here's, in which they're most just, basic let me, basic let me tell uh, you what i did that was uh, worse than that let me tell that. you what let me tell you what i did that worse than that like you know how i told you that i could have donated the money from the air conditioning to save a child mm -hmm. i could have donated instead of saving a child in africa i actually could have ate my chicken and if i donated the mo that money to i don't know some animal rights group or some are, I'm, I'm assuming there are charity groups out there that if you donate to, they will go buy a chicken and free it or something like that. Well, no, 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 because like vegans aren't because then that would produce another chicken to be then. I don't. Like, yeah. Okay. Whatever. I don't know. Supply what, and demand. I'm pretty sure there's some activism that fights against killing Vegan, chickens. Veganism would just stop eating them, okay. man. No. Yeah. No. But I'm saying like I could have saved one chicken by not eating that chicken. But I'm sure I could have found a way. You could have donated to like money. groups that promote veganism, for example. Yeah, and I would have been able to maybe save a hundred chicken today, right? So me deciding not to save a hundred chicken today was worse than the decision that I made to eat that chicken. Do you understand okay, what I'm saying? That's, that's fair enough. But okay, like that's it. Like uh, you just say so that. Like, saying, uh, I, of course, of I course. Did. Then what you're also assuming is that if every other individual isn't using that same logic, uh, okay. which is like that, it's not universifiable. And I was basically saying is that like other individuals aren't just going to donate to the charity that says, oh, we should totally save these chickens. Um, but so, then actually, so here, actively so let me, let me make, I know you understand it, but I, I know you understand it, but let me make this clear to the audience. Like, so for example, between two people, one person that decides to go vegan and not eat the chicken and the second person that decided to eat the chicken, but donate money to save a hundred chicken. I think the second person is being more moral. The person that is eating one chicken and saving a hundred chicken is being more moral than the person that is not donating the money, uh, but is not but is going vegan. Yeah, I, I would on the other hand disagree. I would say that they're not taking uh, ah. social responsibility for their actions. Okay, so they're, see, they're not being rational. So they're, see, they're, they're, not being rational they're not being rational agents. They're not being rationally uh, uh, rational ethical agents. And in so they are 
uh, donating their moral responsibility onto another individual. If anything, increasing the moral burden of uh, of another and See, hoping that they will mitigate. You're look, this is why I'm scared of your way to look at morality because my way of looking at morality, if more people adopt... You're scared of my way of looking more... at morality when your way of morality is currently <laughs> killing 80 Wait, billion let me... animals. <laughs> let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Because my way of my moral standards will reduce more harm than your moral standards. Because your moral standards sees more value in the person that is not eating a chicken, but is also not saving a hundred chicken. No, because your moral Com- standards say that you don't have to take responsibility for your actions so long as you mitigate it with some sort of economic benefit towards another party. No, but forget me. This, these two scenarios, okay? I, I'm, let's say I'm a lost cause, I'm evil, whatever. No, but, no, but like, even like, like, well, like, no, like, let's look at these two scenarios. I value, I value the person that is eating a chicken and saving a hundred, and you value the person that is not eating a chicken and not donating. But in these, so I my in both scenarios, we value the person that decides not to eat chicken because if it wasn't for that person in the first place, no chickens would be saved regardless of how much money was donated. No, but let's look at these two scenarios and see who's better. Okay. Okay, that, that the second person is not an activist. He's just decided to be a vegan. He's just right. deciding to be a vegan, okay? But what I'm saying that if we have more of the, okay, the A, let's say A person is a person that is donating to save 100 chicken and the B version is a person that is going vegan. If we have more of the A, do you have more, less misery than the B? The A is helping reduce misery more than the b so the fact that you value b more than a it, shows it, to I, me I feel like, shows like, to me that your moral standard is not the best standard for reducing the highest amount the of point, misery the point is is that a is not reducing more suffering than b if oh okay a so not, that's that's our difference a, because all i a, care about no let me explain why because you're you're assuming that a is if a's logic was universal is universalized that suffering that's, would be perpetually uh, dropped. No, I'm not talking because, about universalized at all. I'm just well, not, well, I, not, well, I think logic is objective and universal, isn't it? Like logic is a, a impartial, right? <laughs> so if yeah. I was to adopt that rational, you know, impartial standpoint that I should like that I eat animals for one, uh, but then donate the money, let's say for whatever reason, every animal I eat, I get so much money, which I then donate, right? Now, let's say everyone uh, was to, to do such a thing. Right, we would actually yeah, have the same suffering, right? No, because because this everyone person will might, still be eating animal products. No, but, but this person is not living in a world right now. You 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 know you're kind of saying like, oh, if everybody goes gay, then we just all go extinct. Yeah, but we don't. <laughs> like, no, but I'm just saying like it's well, we don't live in a world where everybody is vegan. So. You're coming up with a scenario where it doesn't exist. You're like, well, oh, what I'm saying is that the rationality so, is that, like, for example, that pay- person is trying to right. pay other people to conform to a logic that they, they they themselves do not adopt. Yeah. So what's wrong with that? So they're he's being help- irrational he's helping because more they chickens. know that the logic is the what they should adopt. I uh, no, he's helping more chickens than the other guy. Come but he on, knows you, that he you, could you just, just have stop pre- chickens, and that would be yeah, the right thing to do. But he's a, so he's, he's, a, he's doing more to do the right thing because he won't do it. So fucking what? Yeah, but I'm not saying that he's like the worst person in the world. I'm not even I saying didn't that. I didn't say you're, I'm saying he's better than the other person that is. He's is not better because he's, he knows that he he's is. not doing the right thing. If anything, why does he's that matter? He's, he's willfully. Why he's willfully does that matter? Doing it Jesus. Okay, okay. I'm convinced that my standards are better because my mess, my looking at what. Uh, forget the chickens. My, you are more agents that actively cause suffering. Like this, this, this guy now knows that he's causing the suffering and choosing not to do something about it I'm and tries to pay about himself. The message off. that reduces the highest amount, that is the most effective way of reducing suffering. Okay, that's all I care about. I don't care if you're being following your obligations or if you're being principled or you're like doing something that is knows that that you're wrong. Okay, fuck all that. Yeah, all of that is. You care about that. The guys, I don't care. The, the guys acknowledged yeah. his, his, his duty towards right. not eating chicken. Yeah, so and he's chosen yeah, he, not to do it. So yeah. by, by uh, even I don't what we're talking about any before, he's acting irrationally. Fine. You call it irrational, call it irrational. I care about the fact that all I care about is the fact that he's reducing misery. That's all I care about. You call, call it irrational. My point, call is, it, my point is, is that he won't reduce misery because everyone who adopts that mindset will actively cause harm. Yeah. 
because they are the reason that the harm's occurring in the first place. No, because they're because acting you, to not no, you take, uh, no, to not you're, you're concede doing, to the reasoning that, if, that exists in the in the duty in the first place. No, what they do is pay the someone thing. else to do their duty. You're saying they're essentially if, the same thing. Like, 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 let's he know, lives like, in a world. Like, like, the look world at it like this. Lives. Look at it like this. Let's yeah. say a country that sells off its carbon footprint, right? You like like you know like um right like uh, you're, like you're, reduces its carbon footprint to sell it to another country. Are they doing a good thing? Yeah. Well, are they when the consequences are exactly the same? Wait, say that again. So the consequences are the same. The, the country that reduces its carbon footprint and then sells it, are they doing a good thing? Or oh, reduces its carbon footprint and sells, and sells it to China and China uses it, right? So the consequences are the same. You'd agree that that is nothing's changed, right? Um, well, I, okay, I, I haven't. Can you give me another example? Because I had stronger opinions about carbon footprints and that before. I have to go rethink that right now. I'm, yeah, okay. I mean, I think, I'm just, I'm oh, just essentially on. giving the example. But there's a of cost. Like, no, that's a, that's okay because. Yeah, I'm trying to give I, you an example that I think you'd agree with. Like, you'd be okay with that. Like, the consequences yeah. are, are equal. But the, the, neither good nor bad has occurred in that scenario because no, the consequences people, are the same. Because if you have to pay for producing carbon emissions, it's going to reduce carbon emissions. Yeah, that's a better world to live in. Yes, well, I, I mean, know that you... Okay, like, like possibly pay. I mean, like, uh, uh, the role I was trying to get at is that the overall scenario... And that the, no, but, like, but in this real world, I was trying to just make the, the consequences equal for, for the point. The like, the intention didn't change, the consequences... But you, so you're, you're thinking of a la-la land. You're saying, like, oh, if, I, if we take this to the maximum level and everybody, oh, no. like, we're not going to get to a situation where yeah. everybody is big and if we think like this. But... I'm talking about the world as it is today and the con and the situation that we have right now. In okay, that well, situation, first, that's not necessarily the case, right? Because let, let's say people who buy, like countries that buy their carbon footprints, for example, that's not equated to their overall goals in reducing their own carbon emissions, which would overall negatively impact them, uh, impact them economically because of them being tied into, let's say, like uh, like the national like international agreements. So like, like that's not necessarily the case. Like the reason it's like empirically flawed anyway, and it goes far beyond what me and you can calculate and the and the way that capitalism is going to develop. The point I'm trying to make. If you have that, to pay for producing carbon, then you have you were gonna produce less carbon emissions. That's all. Uh, yeah. If you yeah. don't have to pay for yeah, go ahead. But the, the, like um like overall, like let's let's like look at it like this, right? What I'm trying to say, right, is that let's take an individual who um knows that he could do the right thing, right? right. Mm -hmm. But instead pays five other people to do that right thing instead. So now there's five people doing the right thing that ultimately creates a better consequence in the world, right? Now, we would agree that five people doing the right thing, creating a, a better consequence, is better, right? However, the reasoning, what I'm saying is that, like, ethics being, you know, an epistemological, like, a, a institution, ethics itself is how we should live our lives, how we apply ethics to our lives, okay. that, we would, that that individual would be wrong, I, and he would know he was wrong in accepting that five I mean, people have that obligation. Different. Which, the, the, okay, I agree. Okay, so I see your point. We look at ethics differently. To but me, that's ethics not how we're, looking, we're not looking at ethics differently. Like, we we would agree that even the consequences of him accepting his position, like, would overall be the, the the would be the only way that the consequences of the five other people accepting their responsibility would occur because they've rationally accepted that their actions have consequences which are immoral and unjustified. Yeah, but he already lives in a world where there are those other people that would do this for him. So you're saying if he did, if everybody thought like this guy, then it would be then we would be fucked. Yeah, you're right. But we don't live in that world. So given that we don't live but in like that reason, world, the reason as we've talked about is rational and uh, being rational is impartial and objective. Yeah, but it has to reason should be work work with the with the scenario that we have with the world that we have it have to be flexible enough for you you can't come up with rigid rules for every every situation i never said we should i said that you're the no, one that said that so we should have rules that determine that we do act positively and give to charity for example i yeah. said that we have rules that prevent us from hurting no. one another no, uh, what i'm saying is that what you're saying is like oh if everybody thought about this guy that is paying other people to undo like to do more good than he's doing harm if everybody was like that then there would be no peop no one out there to do those good things. Yeah, I'm like, saying his, okay, his logic, yeah. his logic, if uh, if universalized, would be irrational. Yeah, yeah, but right now he, right now, when uh, while he lives in a situation where there are other people that are doing that, in that situation, it makes logical 
the logical sense for him to do that in that scenario. What would what you be saying? Uh, well, he could, the he consequences, could start part, which he we could agree. Start, no, no. Look, he like could the start consequences changing his as we agree. He, no, let me finish. Better. Let me finish my point. He could start changing his calculations once this keeps growing, and all of a sudden there's there's not that many people left that are actually doing the th good things, and there's only people only paying for other people to do good things. Maybe then his calculate these people's calculations will change. Or like, oh my God, there's nobody actually. There's not that many people left to actually do the good things. So in that world, maybe he will start switching to becoming one of those people. But right uh -huh. now, he doesn't live in that world. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. I mean, what I'm trying to say there, though, is if you look at it like this, right, like the the, the consequences, we would agree, are better. Less chickens are being killed. Right. What I'm saying is that for ethic, ethically, he, since ethics is actively participated by an agent, he isn't being better because he knows that he is doing the wrong thing. Well, I don't like your definition of better then. I don't care if you like him. <laughs> I don't care, but we're just we're just dealing with different standards. That's all we're doing. Like, you know, I think like my my entire I don't care if you're if you're doing something wrong, but that mean like based on what you see as right or wrong, but that means less misery in the world. I like okay, then, then be wrong. Be able to say, I like, want to like, be the wrong. The only reason that he would be seeing I'll... less misery in the world is because of an assumption that other people will behave differently to himself. He's not able to hold himself and to his real... own standard. Fine. He's a hypocrite. That's... No, fine. Okay, if that if being a hypocrite means less suffering, be a hypocrite. Then I would be a proud. I would but the be point a proud is, hypocrite. he wouldn't know it would bring be less proud... suffering because he's assuming everyone else is also not a hypocrite. To be. No. To encourage less suffering, he should his assumption is right. hypocrisy. His assumption <laughs> is right. But his assumption is correct. There are people right now that are doing that. His assumption, you know, like he's assuming that, and his assumption would be correct. How do you know he's assuming, like, for one, right? How do you like know he that? Sees, like, let's that's say he knows that there are activists out there that are doing the exact opposite, right? You could donate what? a vegan ad campaign and have the exact opposite effect where people be like, fuck, I don't want, I don't want to go vegan. Right. And as the, you know, when he goes to dinner with people and he normalizes the institution of eating meat, for example, and portrays it as being justified and not, he's having an, an, an impact upon the ideology. If, if you want to go okay, to fine. ideological yep. extrapolations, I mean, right. we could go massively could far. Show we could me talk about his normative impact in terms of like how he influences other people's behaviors. We could talk about his implicit um, right. yeah, uh, those are, those uh, would be appreciation for the other people like, and, and, and all of these different things that would be, would be changed if he changed his behaviors. Those would be fair points, but now you're arguing with my philosophy of what is right or wrong, which is just reducing the high, like making, sh just doing whatever causes the least amount of misery. But I mean, we're talking about I agree what, what, with you. If you show me that, and determine what is going to be consequentially the greatest overall outcome. That overall is embedded within institutional reasoning and individual obligation. That the the, the caprice of okay. saying that. I am acting morally because of the calculations I've done myself is the same thing as taking the red light. Right. So wait, so whatever calculations you come up with to show me which, you know, if you actually could show me that what he's doing is actually causing more misery, then you would be right. But all I'm pointing out that is that that's the calculation that matters to me. Well, it yeah, I know what you're saying me. is that this it, well, individual. I'm, I'm saying it doesn't matter to me if he's being a hypocrite. It doesn't matter to me if he's not well, following the standards. Is that he's, not, he's not even like, look, he's not, he no, has been a hypocrite. I'm agreeing like, with you. I'm is, trying to agree with you right now. I'm just saying that if if you actually show me that, look, he's paying other people, but because he's eating meat and he's so, like, other people see he's eating meat, so he's normalizing it, blah, 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 and this will show me that actually this will end up causing more harm than good if you actually show me that oh it's causing more misery than uh um, pleasure they were like okay then you're right but that is the calculation that matters to me nothing else matters to me but, like, you know but, being but, a hypocrite my, 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 duties and all of that none of that matters to me that calculation is the only thing that matters to me yeah but the, the point i'm saying like you agree that institutions include like our reasoning as institutional right um i think some of them should be not everything but I think I think reason itself is institutional. I do not think that it can be individualistic. That I can determine what is consequentially the best overall outcome individually. Now, what my so point you, is you is think that like in every our, everything it, in our lives should be every single decision in our lives should be morally in weighed in, not in, in in terms of not impeding another person's subjectivity. Absolutely, that's the law. 
Well, they, you're, 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 you can't do that. Like, yes, you can't. Impossible. It's like, do not kill. You'll go to prison. No, but you can do that with the main important things. You can't do that with because everything we do, there's a butterfly effect to every goddamn thing we okay, do. Okay, all right. Okay, we're going to chaos theory. I'm talking about like individually, like okay, like no, I'm just saying like there's everything. There's an epistemological gonna... like uncertainty of certain actions as well, and like the ability to calculate. Fair enough. And but then like okay, then our institutions become more complex and well founded, and we understand how to live better live our lives in ways of not in, of impacting each other. Uh, and, and and there are some things that are, the effect of them is so insignificant that it should be left to the individual rather than any institution well, it's going to be so different from me and you that you cannot that come it, up yeah but then if it's insignificant the institution would determine it to be insignificant and not write a law upon it but then in that situation the individual might be significant enough for the individual to make the, the, you're muted something happened you're muted yeah. sorry i was sorry. just trying to get my dog to uh, stop hitting himself because he uh he gets he gets itchy this time of year by the way, we got on for three hours and thirty-five. Yeah, yeah, we should probably stop. Yeah, um, yeah I guess, I guess the point, like the the, the main like thing I'm just trying to express is that. By the way, this was fun. His... This is ver- you. You are very challenging to talk to in a good way. So I really <laughs> appreciate that. Like this felt like this this felt like playing chess with somebody, like a five-year-old playing chess with a expert. So this was fun. <laughs> Thanks, man. I hope I'm not the five-year-old. <laughs> no, no, I'm the five-year-old. No, no, no. I feel I really felt like, you know, I enjoyed the struggle. I enjoyed trying to understand what you were saying, even though you obviously have studied this a lot more than I have. Like you are, you're actually, you know, you're, you're a philosopher. I'm not. You're, you know. So, I mean, when I said, you know. It's challenging to talk to you. That's a compliment. <laughs> so, oh, well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I've yeah. enjoyed this conversation as well, and I found it challenging at times as well. Like, I think, I think obviously it, it, it obviously causes you to to evaluate whether your position is correct or not. Like when you have these conversations and like, the interesting thought experiments, um, especially yeah. since I do consider consequences, um, but I do consider intentions as well, and that, that, that's essentially what I was trying to get at with the whole, um, you know, reason is institutional. Uh, you should follow your own obligation because that is itself your uh, expression of being rational and and being free. Um, that's kind of what I was trying to express. Um, yeah. uh, and, and and until you do that, like I feel that like buying buying off other people to be rational, uh, it doesn't it doesn't affect your own obligations, you know. Um, so yeah. Was they annoying in any way? No, I don't think so. I don't think you're too bad. No. Like, uh... Like, I, I, I think, like, very, obviously, I was, things obviously get, like, heated and, uh, um, like, um, usually quite, like, um, they're quite, like, it's quite an intimate topic, I think, for everyone, like, what they eat on a day-to-day basis and, and things like that. So, like, you know, like, obviously, they can become, like, uh, you know, intense. Because af- after the last discussion, I actually tried to think, like, the last discussion I had with that other guy the other weekend, I was trying to, like, you know, am I actually, maybe I was being annoying, or I wasn't trying to be annoying, I was, like, was I being annoying? Like, because he got really angry, and I had to actually try to reflect on what I did in an unbiased way to see maybe I was the re- Maybe he was he was justified to be that annoyed with me. So I was just trying to. That's why I'm. I wanted to ask you if if I if you think I was annoyed. But if you don't, then that's good. I, I'm scared. I, I, what I'm saying is like I'm scared of um, of him being justified. To be that annoyed with me, but I don't think he was because I was really trying to be polite with him. But you had I bad experiences. I don't. With him. And I don't. Yeah, I've had bad experiences with that. So, but I mean, at the same time, like I'm, as I say, I'm trying to distance myself away from oh, it. So I'm God. not going to comment too much because I, <laughs> like, um, <laughs> okay, I, okay. I say sorry. I'm not a fan of the name the trade argument. I don't really use it. I, um, I don't think it's a good argument. Um, but that's about as far as I, I, I really want to just kind of not okay, like sorry. end up in a slagging match with ask yourself again like that. Uh, We've already been through the wars, so I'd no, rather no. not. Uh, I'd rather not just. I just don't want to impact. Yeah, yeah. You already actually told me, and I'm dragging you back there. I'm sorry. It's I okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay. But uh, thank you for the conversation, man. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it is. It was it. Was this good for your channel? Like, is this like? By the way, just before I stop recording, uh, you're giving me permission to put the recording on my channel as well. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Okay. I just want to have that on record. Um, but yeah, let me just stop the recording before I. Yeah. Uh-huh.